United States Coast Guard Training Center, Yorktown Color Guard presents our nation's colors. Please remain standing as Chaplain Philip Kaufman, Naval Weapons Station Yorktown Command Chaplain, as he offers our invocation. Good evening. Will you join me as we pray together? Mighty Creator, with anticipation, we await the command to start engines and for the Federated Auto Parts 400 to begin. But before the excitement begins, the engines roar and the fans begin to cheer, we pause. We pause to remember the great love and care you have for all people. We pause to remember those whose lives have been impacted because of Hurricanes Harvey and Irma and those in harm's way even now. We pause to remember all who serve in the armed forces, especially those deployed at the tip of the spear, prepared to fight tonight and defend our Constitution and way of life. As the race begins, with every turn of this racetrack, we remember that you are present, and we pray that as each driver enters their car, you will protect them and the crew that support them. We pause to remember each person in the stands and pray that all enjoy the competition, the experience, and the goodwill of all fans as we cheer our favorite driver to victory lane. Be present with us all. Amen. Here to perform our national anthem, please welcome the President's own United States Marine Band under the direction of Drum Major Dwayne King. The drivers may look calm, but it's about to get extremely intense. Short track racing coming up next.
Everybody ready, set, go. Rev it up and let's roll. There's a party in the fast lane. Got my hands on the wheel and I'm flying. Heartbeat loud as the thunder rolls. Riding in on the stampede of lightning. Oh, oh, oh. I'm bringing back the sunshine. Bring it back the sunshine Baby, it's about time oh, oh. Bring it back Oh, yeah Welcome to NASCAR Monster Energy Cup Series Racing from Richmond on NBCSN. This telecast presented by Smithfield Foods. A gorgeous night for racing. The drivers about strapped into the cars getting ready for 400 laps at Richmond. Let's go to Kelly Stavis. Rick Chase Elliott should be able to get into the playoffs based on points, but as his crew chief told me, we've seen some fluky things happen this year. So their plan to capitalize on stage points early in this one. Chase Elliott starts ninth. Dave? Kelly, if there's a new 2017 winner tonight and it's not Jamie McMurray, he's got to make sure he's got distance between himself, Kenseth, and Elliott. That is Jamie's agenda. Parker? Dave, Eric Jones comes in here on the heels of a good rookie season and a great last couple weeks, but he's lacking one thing, a win. And that would be an unbelievable thing because it would get him into the playoffs. I asked him if he could do that here tonight. He gave me a big smile and said, we're going to try. He starts 10th, Marty. Well, Joey Logano knows he must win Parker to be able to get into the playoffs. And he won at Richmond here in the spring. And he told me moments ago, car tonight's even better than it was here in the spring. But he also told me two things. One, I must win. And second tonight, when you look at the goal for us, is a failure. They know there's one goal, and that's it, Rick, winning here at Richmond tonight for the 22 team. We have seen some incredible performances when drivers are really more or less put in a corner where they have a must-win situation that is in front of them. Will we see that again tonight at Short Track Racing from Richmond? It's time to get the engines fired. Let's go trackside for tonight's command. And now, for the most famous words in motorsports, please welcome your Grand Marshal, President of Hubbis Auto and Truck Supply, Cliff Hubbis. Drivers! Start your engines! The excitement level has just ramped up. The engines are fired. The fans are definitely fired up. The green flag flies when we come back.
NASCAR on NBCSN is brought to you by Smithfield Foods. Ford, we go further so you can. And by Credit One Bank, the official credit card of NASCAR. It's very challenging and you can't make a mistake. It's so hard to, to win at this level. You're racing against the best. I want to get to victory lane. I want to have good runs. I want to be competitive. I want to be one of the guys that has a shot to win every week. There is one race left in the regular season and a lot of drivers feeling the pressure. There is a lot of emotion in our sport. You just have a different variety of, of situations you're in. You're on attack all the time. You have to race harder now than you ever did. We'll see just how hard these drivers are willing to race. Those that need a win if they want to make it into the playoffs. Let's take a look at the starting grid brought to you by Smithfield Foods up front. Matt Kenseth. He's one of the drivers that's above the cut line, but at the same time has not won in 2017. So feeling a little bit of the pressure if there is a new winner. Row two, we have a pair of drivers looking to add to their playoff point totals, Kurt Busch and Kyle Larson. Well, no surprise, row three also have two playoff bound teams, the 2014 champ Kevin Harvick. He'll start next to this season's regular season champion, Martin Truex Jr. And there's a great battle going on right now for second in the regular season point standings between Kyle Busch and Kyle Larson. Kyle Busch will start seventh tonight. Yeah, row five is nervous row. Chase Elliott needing a solid night tonight to transfer into the playoffs. And Eric Jones, he's on the best streak by rookie since 2004. Well, two cars we're going to focus on all night here, Rick. Jamie McMurray just inside the cut line. Joey Logano in a must-win situation. Back in row seven, Clint Boyer, he's a two-time winner who is in a must-win situation as well. If he wants to make it into the playoffs, he'll start beside Ryan Blaney. In row eight, we have Brad Keselowski and Daniel Suarez. Daniel will hoping to transfer. If he does, he'll be the third rookie to win here. In row nine, Casey Kane and Trevor Bain. Casey Kane is playoff bound with a big win to Indianapolis, but still doesn't have a ride for next season. This will be his last year at Hendrick Motorsports. Back in row 10, Danica Patrick and Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy Johnson, the seven-time champ, looking to add some playoff points. He's already in right behind them in row 11, though. It's Dale Earnhardt Jr. We brought this up at the beginning of the show. Here's a driver who is in a must-win situation. He's won here already three times. Is this a driver who can come from, say, the 11th row and be able to make it all the way through and potentially punch his spot into the playoffs? Well, I think that's absolutely what he wants to do. He wants to find some speed, find some more consistency in this race car. But it's not just about someone like Dale Hart Jr. who's trying to find a win. How about as you look farther back in the field, back here in row 14, Ryan Newman, he's playoff bound. They're looking for a little momentum, a good run to enter the playoffs. Out in front of this field tonight, surprisingly, it's our friend Rutledge Wood. He is the honorary pace car driver and was able to be out on stage and shake every. Well, you can see his smile, by the way, on his face. He is having so much fun out front. He, he's got a big grin on his face. I can also see his plaid, but I'm not going to call him my friend or my associate until I make sure he doesn't mess this up, Rick. We're going to see a lot of pressure, as you see right there, Buster Ott and the official riding with him. Make sure he doesn't mess this thing up. But look at Rut. Huge smile. He's having a blast, isn't he? He's like a kid in a candy store. Well, and I hope he knows. Him. This is so cool. I hope he knows just because the king took an extra lap last week. That doesn't give him permission to take That's an extra right. lap. He needs to follow directions. He was given directions earlier. They were toiling, telling him he has to keep it at 40 miles an hour. That is one of the biggest things with his job is he's got to keep it at 40 miles an hour. So Rick, you've known Rutledge for a long time. Do you think him getting directions means he's going to follow them? Because I see no evidence that that's the case. Absolutely not. One of the great things about this weekend, it is the cutoff race here at Richmond, but it's also fan appreciation weekend. And so to show the fans just how much these drivers appreciate them coming out and supporting stock car, stock car racing, they're going to go four wide to salute the fans here at Richmond. And that's one of the most impressive scenes in all of racing. And this just reminds me, we talk about Saturday night under the lights, short track racing. Well, this is it. Whether you're on dirt at the Knoxville Nationals or asphalt up at the Oxford 250 in Oxford, Maine, it's short track racing and saluting the fans. And this is unbelievable. Yeah, it's a great tradition started in sprint cars. Show the fans how much you appreciate them. And 
All the color of the rainbow under the lights. It's just beautiful. Well, they proved they can go four wide at this speed. We'll see if anybody <laughs> tries it. But we're going to see two, three, and even four wide racing on some of these restarts right here into turn three. It'll stack up all night long. What an impressive sight that is. As you mentioned, all the colors of the rainbow right there. And you got to pick your favorite driver out of that group. Who will you cheer for tonight? Who do you want to see make it to victory lane? Maybe someone who's already won in 2017 or somebody who Maybe needs a first time win. One of the young guns that's trying to make a name for themselves. Well, the fans are on their feet thanking these drivers. The drivers appreciate the fans coming out and supporting the passion that they love to do each and every week. Rick, one thing that's so special about tonight that the fans are going to be able to see is everybody in these race cars, all the teams, they all have something to gain. Every single one of them, whether in their playoffs or not, they can add to their playoff points. They can get themselves in the playoffs. Tonight can be a night that helps you win a championship for every single team on the race We're going to drive along with a few different drivers tonight. Take us through it, guys. Well, it starts back in the 22nd position. A.J. Allmendinger, he'll have the Kroger onboard camera. He'll give us some great shots back in row 11. And yeah, speaking of that pressure, riding along with Joey Logano starting in 12th position with the Ford Performance Cam. Well, up in the sixth position, Kevin Harvick. He doesn't have any pressure. He's playoff bound. He'll have the Jimmy John's in-car camera. Well, riding on the, with a pole sitter tonight with a Toyota cam. Matt Kenseth, you mentioned it, doesn't have a ride for next year. Come so close to winning races lately. Hadn't been able to pull it off. Starting on the pole tonight. Could he make it happen? About to get to the green flag. We want to break this race down from Richmond Raceway, this three-quarter mile short track. Yeah, it's 400 laps, which is 300 miles, as you mentioned, three-quarters of a mile around this D-shaped oval. Yeah, and these stages are broken up. Stage one, 100 laps. Stage two, 100 laps. The final stage, 200 laps. Yeah, and you can go about 125 laps on fuel, so that shouldn't be an issue in the first two stages. But we're going to continue to talk about these three. Clint Boyer, a couple wins. Joey Elgano, a couple wins. One taken away. It's encumbered in Eric Jones, a rookie who is currently on a hot streak we haven't seen for at least 10 years. He is on fire lately, Rick. Out in front, let's see if Matt Kenseth can make the most of winning the pole. Kenseth hasn't won in 2017. Can he change that tonight? Green flags in the air from Richmond. A week ago, these cars and drivers were at Darlington, a racetrack that's known for chewing up tires. Well, Richmond, not a lot different. The tires will definitely be abused tonight. How long can they last and who will abuse them the most or get the most out of them? And already we're starting to see a couple options to go around this racetrack. You see the 41, that red and black Haas car on the bottom of the racetrack, kind of fighting against that yellow line while the 42 of Kyle Larson runs up one line. Parker? Well, Steve, it's funny you say that because as that 41 goes backwards, I'm not surprised. Tony Gibson, his crew chief, told me he did not expect them to be very good on the short run. They were definitely set up for the long run. But another thing he told me that was interesting is although Kurt is great here, he's not great at protecting those tires. And so one thing Kurt was going to focus on was protecting those tires each and every lap to be good on that long run. How do you do that, Jeff? How do you protect the tires? I know how I've coached drivers, drive off straight, don't spin the tires. But inside the seat, what's going to have to be his goal? Well, the only thing you can do is not contest the position. You have to take it easy. So you see that side-by-side -side battle. I mean, you can give it up. You can just say, hey, you guys go and give those positions up. But the only way to save tires is not to push them. And that means you're not going to be going as fast as you need to be going. This is going to be the focus all night on board with the 22 of Joey Logano. We have, it's been so well documented, must win. But right out his rear bumper, that 77, that all black car of Eric Jones, I actually feel he was the fastest of the must win cars in practice. We'll see though. Remember, Rick, practice, middle of the day. This is the Richmond night race. We'll see now that the sun has set. Will the handling of these cars stay the same? And I think so important for Eric Jones, the rhythm of running in the front has started to happen three top fives in a row. He's been running in the front, leading laps. He doesn't feel uncomfortable now at this point in the year of his rookie season. He feels like he should run up front. He feels like he belongs there, and I think that makes a huge difference in your confidence. 
Clint Boyer in the 14 just in front of the two of Brad Kozlowski the 22 of Joey Logano on the hat on the top of the screen you're going to see drivers that will have a green playoffs chip just underneath their names if it's green that means that they are locked into the playoffs if they're in yellow they're in the top 16 in the points but not yet locked in Marty and Rick we talk about these must win situations don't count out Clint Boyer either he's the one outside in 17th right now he also needs a win this evening to make it into the playoffs here was a pep talk on the radio before the race started we ain't going down without a fight tonight so we'll do everything we can take every opportunity we can try and get in this uh, chase here and uh, have a good race tonight be safe out there Clint and don't forget, Boyer has won here twice in the past. In fact, when Rush Truck Centers, who's sponsoring him tonight, said, hey, what race should we sponsor? He said, sponsor Richmond. It's my best racetrack. Boyer is not going to go down without a fight. Going to be fun to watch this 14 all evening long, Rick. Absolutely. Just outside the top 10 right now, running in 11th. But it's a long race, 400 laps around this three-quarter mile short track. And you see the 24, Chase Elliott, falling behind the four of... Kevin Harvick. Yeah, Kevin Harvick called Chase Elliott off of turn four, and Chase saw him coming, and instead of giving up two spots by Kevin getting underneath him, he quickly moved out of the way to protect that position from the car behind him. So smart move by Chase Elliott. But, Rick, we're 10 laps in. When we talk long runs here at Richmond, we don't mean 25 or 30 laps. We mean 60, 70, 80, even 90 lap runs. So these cars are going to continue to change. We're going to continue to ride on board, let you hear this throttle control. There'll be parts in this run where they will be part of the throttle literally all the way to the start finish line. I know that's hard to believe because you think it's a straightaway, but Jeff, you could spin the tires all the way down the straightaway. Yeah, well, you listen right here. Listen to Kevin Harvick, how easy he is on the throttle. He's not just going to jump in the throttle, he's going to feather the throttle. Watch the green dots on the bottom of the screen. It'll show you what percentage of throttle he's using. So he doesn't just go wide open to the throttle. He opens the throttle a little bit, gives it a little more throttle as the rear wheels will take it. Watch in turn two. You have to be even more patient in turn two. Dave. Jamie McMurray there in the red number one. His car was typical at this racetrack yesterday in practice, according to crew chief Matt McCall. As he goes to look under Chase Elliott here, one of the cars he needs to be ahead of at the end of the night. McCall told me that it was loose at times, it was tight at times. They did make several adjustments to try to get this car just right for the race. So far, it's going the right direction for McMurray. Ken's out in front by almost a half a second as McMurray still trying to get by that 24 of Chase Elliott. He'll make the pass. Elliott will duck in behind him. And yeah, these two guys, they definitely don't want to make contact. They're in the same situation. They. As long as you don't have a new winner tonight, these two guys, they're advancing into the playoffs. And how about right behind them, that 17, the white and blue car, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. has those two wins at the restrictor plate tracks, but really has shown pretty good speed all weekend long. Had a good run here in the spring. He kind of got stuck behind the 24 right there. Now it's going to try to work three wide and split the 24. He couldn't do it. But Ricky Stenhouse trying to get that momentum that we discussed, wants to carry that into the playoffs and prove it's not just the restricted play tracks he can run on. This is a good racetrack for Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Much like Bristol, remember, he, ran, he finished fourth here in April. So Ricky Stenhouse Jr., when you think about tracks other than Daytona and Talladega, Bristol and Richmond, I think, are two of his best. Still out in front. Matt Kenseth has a six-tenth of a second lead over Denny Hamlin, his teammate. Well, Kenseth led the first 163 laps here in April when he started from the pole. Can he duplicate that feat tonight?
And welcome back to the Federated Auto Parts 400 from Richmond Raceway. Looking down on this three quarter mile track, our aerial coverage provided by our partners at Smithfield Foods. And from way up here, you can almost see that already the rotors are starting to glow on these brakes. And this is a racetrack where you're hard on the brakes. You are hard on the brakes, but you're also on the brakes for a long time. So as we see these two cars battling, Martin Tracks Jr. and Denny Hamlin down the backstretch. Look inside the left front wheel on both of these cars. You see it there on the 78. That's not too bad. That's kind of a dull glow. That's kind of what you would expect as the 78 tries to cross him over. And Jeff, explain. So you get on the brakes to slow down, but they also kind of stay on the brakes to get the car to roll through the middle of the corner. That's right. You want to try to get the speed down on the car to be able to make the corner. So you tend to drag that brake just a little bit. And as you watch the 78, car from the side into turn three here you might can see just a little bit of rear glow on the rear see the rear rotor it's also glowing so what martin truex jr and his team have done they've got a little more rear brake bias so what they even though the front's glowing their rear is glowing also meaning telling me that they've got some rear brake in it trying to take a little bit of heat off those front brakes and it sounds simple rick but basically you know, why are these brakes glowing? They're designed to run hot. They're designed for the temperature to actually increase the temperature. As we go into our NASCAR Heat 2 animation here, and we look inside the race car, you'll understand every time, every corner, as the driver goes down and steps on the brake pedal, it compresses those brake pads to the rotor in the center, and you see how they start to glow red because that's what you're seeing there. As they clamp on that rotor, that rotor can get so hot, it actually goes from red to white, if you can believe it. White hot brakes. You're talking 15, 16, 1700 degrees. Now, you don't want them to operate there all night. You really want them in the 1300 degree range. But, Jeff, you have to just be aware of them and take care of them so they're there when you need them in those final restarts. So, remember, it isn't so much that you're going to fail your brakes because the brakes are they're durable, they're tough. But that heat has to go somewhere. And many times it absorbs to the wheel, then the wheel is attached to the tire and the tire actually melts. The air comes out of the tire. We saw it last night in the Xfinity race. It's not uncommon for it to happen here at Richmond where you actually melt the beat of a tire. Kelly. We see Chase Elliott there ahead of Brad Keselowski started this race ninth. I believe he's in the eighth position now. As much success as he had in the Xfinity series, including a win, he has struggled here a little bit in the cup car. So here was the discussion amongst his team pre-race. All about the fight tonight. Going to be a tough one. Let's go get him. Tired of being happy with decent. Got to step up. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's do it. So you heard Chase saying he's tired of being happy with decent. He told me pre-race they want to learn and do better here, not just because it's a cutoff race, because they want to be better at Richmond, period. And I like that mentality, Kelly, because I think that's also the playoff mentality. Let's not worry about Richmond to make sure we're in the playoffs. Let's make sure when we make the playoffs, it's for a reason that we can continue through these rounds, that we can actually be a contender. I think that's Chase Elliott saying, listen, we've been decent, but decent is not going to be good enough when the trophies start getting handed out in these last 10 races. Parker. Well, guys, if you look there, the 77, Eric Jones trying to hold off the 88 of Dale Earnhardt Jr. He took a hard push to the back there. Starting in the 10th position, Eric did. He fell all the way far back in 16th place and now runs in 15th, trying to hold off Dale Earnhardt Jr. there. And the reason being, he was terrible, as he said on the radio. And one of the biggest issues was that for the first 15 to 20 laps, he felt like the air pressures were way too low for that race car to come in and now feels like it's just a little bit better as he runs that high line. And Steve, I got to think that's something that they can work on going forward, but that's a tough position because you want to get those air pressures low to make it good on the long run. Well, you do, Parker, but this is also a tough situation for a rookie driver, and this is what we talk about, Jeff. It's just not lap time. It's when you talk about Richmond and the weekend as a whole, you practice during the day. So while the crew chief should have a notebook about that as a race car driver, Jeff, I need you to understand that's the daytime and what you're searching for, the feel you're searching for. I need to lean on you. Jeff, is this what it should drive like during the day, or is this what you need when it gets into the night? And car up into the wall in turn one and two. That's the 34. Landon Castle Keep Keep and a lot good. of damage go to the top. right side. Yeah, that right there. It's pancaked both the front and the rear, and you see the back kind of moving around. It either has a flat tire or perhaps the Rear suspension is broken, not holding the car straight. Bring it to the stall. I think it's probably killed. Yeah, obviously, big contact from Landon Castle. Right in front of the leader, Matt Kenseth, who drives into turn one. Landon does, and all the signs of a tire down or mechanical issue. I think the left rear tire is down. 
That's get what it looks like. Corner. To me, yeah. And just nothing you can do without without air in the tires. Long for the ride. So it happened right in front of Matt Kenseth. That was the only thing that was going to slow him down. Kenseth out in front at Richmond. In the books, you see Denny Hamlin peeling off to his pit stall after this most recent caution. He said his car was tight at the start of the run and just got worse the longer they ran. Chris Gabehart on the box this week, filling in for Mike Wheeler, who was suspended after those two races from the encumbered win at Darlington. Below him, Martin Truex Jr. It's going to be four tires for Martin Truex Jr. He said his car was a little bit too tight, but he's pretty happy with it. Matt Kenseth with a lightning fast stop. No changes to that 20 car. He holds the lead here on pit road. Race off pit road brought to you by Kroger Click List. Kenseth. Just 39 laps into the first stage from here at Richmond. As we get ready for the first restart of the night. And once again up front, Matt Kenseth. This time it's Kurt Busch who will be on the outside. Into the Geico restart zone. Green flag back in the air. Kyle Busch with a great start. Three wide, fighting for that second spot.
Kyle Busch trying to take second away now for Martin Truex Jr. The sparks continue to fly. And that's pretty normal, Rick. You heard Parker discuss those low air pressures these crew chiefs are trying to run at the start of these runs because they will build up. Well, with that low air pressure, the travel of the car is a little bit more. It's closer to the racetrack. So that right side skirt around the exhaust, it just drags a little bit, causing all those sparks. Another thing that will bring the tire pressure up will be that heat and the brakes that you guys have talked about. And that's what you really have to be careful. You know, we talk about Richmond and handling issues here. Well, a normal characteristic is tight in the middle. The front grip goes away. Well, that gets worse. While the brakes help it turn, the longer you use the brakes to help it turn, the worse it hurts the front tires. And over a long run, it'll push even more. Clint Boyer in the 14 has to win. Boyer currently running eighth. Left side of the screen, you see the cut line. 20, 24, and 1, still well above the cut line. Saw Force. Kevin. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I saw, you saw Kevin Harvick. He went way low down the front straightaway. He was riding along, and then all of a sudden he turned right, getting into turn one. He was trying to block Casey Kane, trying not to give that spot up, but realized that Casey was there and had to turn right to make sure they didn't make contact. And this is something that when we talk about the levels of NASCAR, whether it's truck through Xfinity up to cup, one thing I notice up here in the booth that's different about cup racing is fifth, sixth, seventh, 15th, 20th, all the way through the field, there's a battle as there is right here, three wide. You know, Jeff, when you make a mistake and someone gets you out of the preferred lane, it's multiple spots you give up, not just one and two. That's right, the competition is so tough. It's so incredibly hard. The drivers are tougher, the, the teams are tougher. Everything is harder in cup. Marty. And Jeff Denny Hamlin has plummeted through the field. He restarted six. I think he's back in the 13th position right now and maybe going to lose more spots. He came on the radio immediately after the restart. He said, it's already so tight. It feels like something's broken in the car. We'll keep our eye on that 11 car, but not going well so far in the second run of the race. And he really wants to put last week's race behind him with maybe a good finish here. Last week's race was encumbered. There was a problem after he had won the race. He then that car gets taken to the R&D center and it was deemed that it was not it did not pass technical inspection once it got to the R&D center and so the win was ruled encumbered. Yeah so encumbered could be confusing it's real simple. He loses basically all of the accolades for winning. He loses the playoff points the regular points the money he loses his crew chief and really because of Denny and other teams having that same sort of infraction NASCAR this week that came out and said listen we have a window of penalties we're allowed we've kind of been in the middle we're done being in the middle we're going to take that infraction and move it to the most severe edge and Jeff I like that I think it's time to do more obviously encumbered is not stopping these race teams from being at the edge I know they don't mean to be outside but they're so close to the edge they end up outside so something has to be changed I think that's the key Steve is that no one goes through no one goes through tech knowing they're going to fail they're using every bit of the tolerance and then a little bit of something goes wrong and now they're out of tolerance and they're illegal then NASCAR's got to step in and penalize them the only way that you're going to keep the teams from continuing to do this is make the penalties so great that they can't afford it. They cannot afford it. And I'm going to tell you, Denny Hamlin, this is his, home, this is his hometown racetrack. Right. This is Richmond. He won here last year. The fans went nuts. I heard people boo him tonight. I, I mean, that's right. That's a big deal. People want to know that it's fair. So Denny Hamlin, Joe Gibbs Racing, they're not cheaters. They are used every bit of the tolerance, and it got a little bit over. But NASCAR, it's their job to rein them back in and make sure that this is going to take over the sport. They just didn't pass technical inspection. Parker. Well, guys, you see that 77 of Eric Jones trying to hold off the two of Brad Keselowski for 10th place. Earlier before this caution, we heard him talk about his car and what it was doing. En entry's okay. Center's plowing. And I mean, a zero drive. Uh, it's nothing there. Is the center plowing causing the exit? No, I've got to stop to get turned. So our point is straight, and I still can't go. Good for and before we heard it, before that radio transmission, he said it was actually terrible at one point. So when they came down the pits, they did an air pressure adjustment, as we talked about, Steve, and they also did wedge, and that thing came alive on the restart. Far better on the short run than he was in the run prior. Well, that's what the whole night's going to be about, Rick, is adjustments. 400 laps around here, not only because the sun's gone down, but the track will change. As all these cars are out here together, the groove will move from the bottom to the top, and the crew chiefs will have to stay on top of the handling. Parker? 
Well, guys, you see the 41 there, Kurt Busch. He had a great pit stop, considering that he went and gained three positions and put him on the front row. He didn't have a great restart, but why was that pit stop so great? Not only did they gain three positions, but they did a double adjustment in the rear, meaning both wedge bolts in that 41 car to make a lot of adjustment because he's been fighting too tight in the center. I know we hear that a lot, but that's something he's been fighting right now, still struggling on the short run as we saw him struggle on that restart. Rick, if you got to make a swing, make a swing early and get ahead of it. Danny Hamlin, the 11 car, he shows us as he takes a little shot at the 22 of Joey Logano, Danny Hamlin in this 11 car shows us just how fragile track position can be. Remember, before this cycle of pit stops, he was running in the third position. Now he's currently back outside the top 13 and 14. So remember, he enters pit road in third. Pit stops are done. You see the 11 pull out of his pit box with the 78 pulls out. He has to check up. He loses three spots, and that puts him in six for the restart, Jeff. Yeah, now he's at the outside line, so he's starting next to Kyle Busch. Well, Kyle Busch gets such a great restart. See all the momentum he has? Now it's three wide in front of the 11 car. 11 car didn't do anything wrong, but everything is stacked up in front of him. Nowhere to go right here. Now he's up the racetrack, and the line just keeps coming and coming. So not a great restart, not a great pit stop. Now you've lost a lot of spots. Talk about frustrating. So. Didn't do anything wrong on pit road, didn't do anything wrong on the restart, yet lost 11 spots from where he was running before the caution came out. And that is short track racing. The frustrations that these drivers have to deal with. No frustrations for Matt Kenseth. He's been out front for all 57 laps. NASCAR on NBCSN is brought to you by Liberty Mutual Insurance, helping drivers worry less on the track and on the road. And welcome back to the Monster Energy Cup Series racing from Richmond. This telecast presented by Smithfield Food. Still out in front, it's Matt Kenseth driving his Toyota Camry. He has led 63 laps already and continues to add to that. Let's go down to the Toyota Camry on track car with Rutledge Wood. Rick, I got a great look at Matt Kenseth's car when I was driving the pace car earlier, and I really thought he was going to nudge me. But I've got the secondary pace car right over here, right next to our on-track car. The really cool thing is when Calti designs lead designer Ian Cardiano, when he designed the car, this is the first time we've seen a manufacturer design the new street car, the 2018 Camry, at the same time as the race car. You can see all the big angular changes on the grille, what that means for airflow, that big center grille. And when you look over here on Jeff Burton's on-track car, you see the same stuff. And the thing I wonder, Jeff, is when you talk about cooling here at Richmond we know that's the name of the game for the brake the water temperature you know how important is that here and how many manufacturers do you think we're going to see start doing this good thinking where they want the street car and the race car to look the same and be able to get the advantages of that 
Yeah, I think the manufacturers are going to be taking full advantage of it. I think it's it's important for them to do it because when they submit a car, that's what the submittal is. If the car isn't good enough, then it's hard to win with it. So you're going to see a lot of that. Cooling's big everywhere, Rutledge. It's just, just it just is. Here you want to cool your brakes, you need to cool your engine, but you want to do it efficiently, Steve. The less amount of opening that you have to have in the front of the car, the more downforce it makes, the less drag it makes. So cooling it efficiently versus inefficiently, that's the key. Well, and downforce is like the pot of gold, Rick. It's everyone's best friend. I've never met a driver that's, you know, it's just too much downforce, Jeff. Go ahead and pull some of that <laughs> Take tape. some of that off. Yeah. <laughs> Dave. Rick, one update. One of the drivers who needs a good run tonight, Jamie McMurray in the one car, slid back since that restart, telling his crew chief the same thing he told him on the first run. The car is just free. It's sliding that back end, and Jamie's lost six spots since the restart. Puts him well behind Matt Kenseth and behind Chase Elliott as well. Must win situation, or if someone outside the top 16 gets to victory lane, then Jamie McMurray definitely has to worry. He's got to be nervous because he right now is on the cut line. And I think for his best case scenario is our leader Matt Kenseth. You know if, he, if Matt Kenseth wins he's in great shape right he can't get knocked out so if somebody else if somebody's going to win Matt Kenseth is not a bad option for him. Marty. Let's go to Parker. Thanks guys and watching that 41 car I know we've talked a lot about him but you were just talking about brake cooling and how you cool the brakes and what you're trying to do with that well Steve, you'll know this. Sometimes you can get them too cool down the straightaway, and that is what the 41 is struggling with right now. The brakes are causing a vibration inside that 41 car as he goes backwards right now, and therefore he's turned off his brake fans and hoping to get more heat to them and therefore not have that vibration, Kelly. Parker, moments ago it was the two of Brad Keselowski that got around Kurt Busch in that 41. Well, if Brad can win tonight, it will be a sweep of the weekend, having won the Xfinity Series race last night. And much like the race car he had then, which he told me feels very similar to this one he's driving tonight, his car will be good over a long run. So as crew chief Paul Wolf told me, at the start and on these restarts, he's got to be patient, knowing that the car will come to him in the long run. Before we had that caution, he was significantly faster than the cars ahead of him. And now, again, in this section, he is starting to make up ground. Matt Kenseth, Martin Trucks Jr., one and two. Then it's Kyle Busch, Kyle Larson, and Chase Elliott, the top five. Clint Boyer is running six. Brad Keselowski back in seven. Well, you mentioned Matt Kenseth. He had a little over a one-second lead on the 78 of Martin Trex Jr., but I feel like we see this every week. Don't look now. 27 to go in stage one. There's going to be a playoff point awarded. And who shows up in the picture but that 78 of Martin Truex Jr.? Remember that move he put on Kyle Larson last week, passing him to the line at Darlington by a few feet for that singular point. And with 27 to go, you have to think that's on the mind of this 78 team. Yeah, the, the, the teams, by Martin Truex Jr. getting all these playoff points, these other teams need to fight that, right? The only way to keep him from getting it is for you to take them. So right now, Matt Kenseth, he's in pretty good shape to make the playoffs. It would, a lot of bad stuff would have to happen. He has to have that in his mind also. You've got to race Martin Truex Jr. You cannot just give him this spot if you catch him because you need those playoff points. Marty. And Rick, speaking of playoff points, you would think after they won the regular season championship last week, now going into the playoffs with 52 points, Martin Truex Jr. seemed to sort of be relaxed this week, and he told me, nope, no vacation here for us. There's still points on the line tonight. Proving that right now, trying to win this stage, collect one more playoff point as if they don't have enough on the field already. But the guy who's in the must-win situation in the best spot right now, Clint Boyer. Restarted 12th, up to 6 right now, going in the right direction. The car is pretty quick for Boyer as well. And Mike Bagaravich, his crew chief, said this playoff system to me is like a three-point shot in basketball. You live by it, you die by it. Last year, I lived by it. Remember Tony Stewart won that big race at Sonoma? Got himself into the playoffs this year. He told me we're tenth in the championship standings. We deserve a spot in the playoffs. But right now, we're not in. Boyer in a must-win situation right now, running the best of those guys currently in sixth. Look who is in sixth. That's right, Clint Boyer, a guy who has to win. Told his sponsor, "This is the best place. I want you to be on the hood because this is the best shot at me getting to victory lane, and he needs to if he wants to be a part of the championship run." He's got to be up there and running for the win tonight. Well, he's got 323 laps still to go, but already in the top 10 and closing in on the top five. Clint Boyer running six. Matt Kenseth still leading. Now only eight tenths of a second in front of 
Martin Truex Jr. What are they racing for? They're racing for a trophy. Not just for this race, but at the end of the season, who will become the first ever Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series champion? That trophy is what is on the line. NASCAR Drive is NASCAR.com's live race day companion. Now available on your mobile device. Select your favorite camera angle or driver with in-car video. You can even watch multiple angles at once. Never miss a lap with NASCAR Drive. This is NASCAR.com slash drive from your PC. Matt Kenseth now just a half a second over the 78 of Martin Truex Jr. 16 laps to go in stage one. Kelly. Well, Jimmy Johnson's a three-time winner here at Richmond, but if you're looking for the seven-time champion, you got to look back to 21st position. Jimmy's really got his hands full. He said, hey, look, I was loose before, but this is just getting ridiculous. He's been trying to adjust the track bar inside the cockpit to make it uh, better, and now his crew chief, Chad Canals, playing a bit of a cheerleader, saying, hey, look, don't get frustrated. It's only 100 laps to the end of stage one, and then he said, look, it's just one bad restart. Come on, Jimmy, we can do this. We can do this, but they've got some big adjustments ahead of them on this 48. Well, Jimmy Johnson's not used to running 20th, and right now he's running in the 20th position and not making up any ground. No, and the question is, when does the panic set in? We have this conversation every year, but you know, when are the 48 going to step it up? I think next week at Chicago will really be the test. And some smoke coming out of the 20 there. A caution has come out. Looked like it was smoke out of the back of the 20, but yeah, it had that whisper around it. It definitely something looked off for sure, Rick. Race leader Matt Kenseth. Look at this. Locks the brakes up going into the turn. Doesn't lose the lead, and I'm not sure that was the reason for the caution, though. Caution came out just about the same time. That was very odd looking. It's very easy to lock a left front brake up here, getting in the corner. The left front's pretty light. Get on the throttle, yeah, get on the brake a little too hard. Five and start getting tight center, and a little slippery up off, a little slippery on entry. Surprisingly, NASCAR saw the smoke and immediately put the caution out, thinking that maybe he was going around or someone was going to ground. Well, the caution came out at a pretty interesting time with 12 laps ideal. to go. Yeah, I mean, well, I don't know about ideal, but it, it could really change the strategy of tonight's race. You see right here, he's underneath Danica. Well, with all that smoke, I'm wondering if NASCAR didn't think there was fluid on the racetrack. Yeah. And you know, the problem is it's three quarters of a mile divided by 40 cars. There's no real room to wait and see. If there's fluid, there's five or six cars that are going to pile off in there. So with only 90 laps into the race, NASCAR being very precautionary and putting the yellow out. But now the question is, does everyone pit? They need tires. It's been 47 laps, but with only 12 to go to the stage in, will anybody gamble? It would be a huge gamble. I think everybody will be on pit road. And right now you're seeing the top two. 
They've made it to pit road. Dave. And Rick, for third place, Kyle Busch, it's really just about fine tuning now. Where he's running on the racetrack, just little tweaks to the handling of the race car. Four Goodyear tires, full of Sunoco fuel, and a chassis adjustment. Marty? Martin Truex Jr. slides to a stop in his pit stall right behind Matt Kenseth, just a couple of stalls away. He said the car wasn't bad, a little too tight as they went along, but he was a little bit better than the 20 car. Matt Kenseth did not say a word. He's on the bottom of your screen about that brake lockup at all. As the 78 shoots around, Joey Logano and his team, he said his car was just a little bit too tight towards the end of the run. Kenseth taking advantage of that number one stall. Ready for the restart. Three cars stayed out. Brad Kozlowski, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., and Paul Menard. They're on old tires compared to the 20 of Matt Kenseth, who will restart on the outside of row two. The field approaching the Geico restart zone. Eight laps of racing to go. Four wide going through one and two. Kyle Busch shoots to the lead. Fighting for position, fighting for playoff points. Kyle Busch out front, wanting a win in this stage. How about Clint Boyer and both Eric Jones worked themselves up to the top four. Yeah, Backing up the 11. Yeah, well, he's stuck right now behind the 27 on those old tires. I know this sounds silly, but you saw the 17 pull completely out of the way and let cars go. I really think this strategy call is to save a set of tires. I think the teams knew they were going to be unsuccessful. These new tires are going to go right by them, but perhaps planning ahead for the end of the race, Kelly. You're exactly right. When I talked to Paul Wolf before the race, he said, look, there's really not a lot of opportunity for movement in the regular season points, so we're not concerned about stage points unless we could get a stage win. This is all strategy looking big picture going for the race win. Looking for the stage win here. Kyle Larson in the 42 moving up right on the back bumper of Kyle Busch. This is stage racing at its best. In a normal race, these two would have a little bit of space between them. But with a playoff point on the line with five to go, Kyle Larson making contact with the rear bumper of Kyle Busch. Short track racing. A little bumping and banging. Bush and Larson entered nine points apart, battling for second in the regular season points. That's big. That's 10 more playoff points. Jeff, this is the classic case of you're way better than me through the middle of the corner, but where are you going to go? You catch me, get right to my bumper, but I'm pretty good on corner exit. Kyle Busch drives off the front bumper of Kyle Larson on corner exit. Kyle's got a good run right now. Kyle Larson 
Thought he might get turn left, but he just can't do it. Three to go in stage one. It's what Steve's talking about is right here in the middle of the corner, Kyle Larson's faster, but unless he's going to get into the back of Kyle Busch, there's nowhere to go. So Kyle Larson's got to change his tempo, change when he's accelerating, back up the entry speed, go to the throttle a little bit quicker, try to gain on him at the right place in the corner. Brad Keselowski working on the outside of the 77 of Eric Jones. Still about a car length between the 18 and 42 for the lead. That's Joey Logano. Logano and the 77 of Eric Jones. So Again. now you have three. You have Boyer, Logano, Eric Jones. Three cars in the top six that need wins to move into the playoffs. This is it. The last lap of stage one. Kyle Busch. Car length and a half in front of Kyle Larson. Larson's going to go high. As they come out of turn four, it's Kyle Busch winning stage one. <laughs> Top ten, all earning points. Already the 11th stage win for Kyle Busch as he wins stage one at Richmond, the last race of the regular season. And welcome back to Richmond Raceway. Under the lights, the final race of the 2017 regular season. Well, Sunday night football is football night. That's Eli Manning and the New York Giants. They will visit Dak Prescott and the Cowboys in the season premiere of Sunday night football. Tariko and Patrick hosting football night in America. That's tomorrow at 7 p.m. Eastern, only on NBC. Rick, I've decided that's going to be my ringtone. <laughs> I love that ringtone. music. So we've seen this tire strategy. So why did they do that? So Paul Menard did it. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. did it. And Brad Keselowski did it. They saved a set of tires. Two of those three, Keselowski and, and Stenhouse, they already have wins. That's right. So they just want to get a win to add to their playoff total. Menard, he needs to try to find a way. So he's gambling, hoping that these extra set of tires later in the race can get him a win. Dave. And Rick on the pit road now comes the stage one winner, Kyle Busch. Really not a lot to complain about with this race car. So, again, subtle adjustments for Kyle on the 18, Marty. 
think those teams who did take tires last time can put notes in the notebook for later in the race. Mike Bugaravich asked Clint Boyer, he said, what did you learn for that short run in case we need it later in the race? And Boyer slides literally to a stop in his pit stall. He said that it got a little too free, so they're going to make an air pressure adjustment, tighten up that car. Matt Kenseth up front, he said it was tough to tell what the car was going to do in dirty air, so leave it. Don't make any changes to the car. Let's see if the 20 team can win the race off pit road again. They do not. I believe that would go to the 18 car, Rick. Yeah, the race off pit road brought to you by NASCAR Heat 2 video game. Kyle Busch, Kyle Larson, one and two off pit road. Welcome back to Richmond stage one already in the books now as Kyle Busch was able to get that first stage win. Everyone thinking though about what's taking place with the hurricanes around the country hand in hand a benefit for hurricane relief will feature some of the nation's biggest stars including George Clooney Jamie Foxx Beyonce Blake Shelton and a special performance from Texas by George Strait. That's Tuesday at 8 7 central on NBC. And the NASCAR community definitely wanting to lend a hand. The 20 and the 22 both have American Red Cross on the hoods of their cars trying to help out. And the whole NASCAR community trying to help out as well as tracks like Charlotte and Bristol, Talladega and Atlanta all opening up their campgrounds for Places for the evacu evacuees that have left Florida. Give them a place that they can stay while the storm is now hitting the Florida Peninsula. Want to update on what's going on with the 14 of Clint Boyer, Marty? Came in third, Rick. He will restart 34th. They had a man over the wall too soon. The team is back here looking at the replay. You see that on the left hand side of the screen. Competition director for Stuart Haas Racing, Greg Zipidelli, pointing out that the front tire changer was over the wall too soon. That is a massive penalty for this team who needs to get in. And there you see him getting over the wall. You have to be a certain number of pit stalls away before they can touch a foot on the ground. They went too early. So Boyer will restart 34th. And Ryan Newman stayed out. He's on the outside of row one. They go through the Geico restart zone and back to racing. Oof, I'm a little worried about that 31's plan staying out on older tires. It, you know, the strategy that the two in those cars employed is because they knew the caution was coming at the stage end. Well, unfortunately for the 31 of Ryan Newman, 
If this ends up being a very long run, it could cost the 31 a lap. Yeah, I think he had a speeding penalty early in the race, and I think maybe they were just trying to gamble a little bit to get that track position back. Oh, and that's tight racing. Three wide, maybe even four wide. Eric Jones wisely backs out in that bright Daglo 77 on the bottom of the racetrack. He knows he needs to win this race, but he can't win it with 290 to go. Four wide into turn one was not going to be a good decision. And if you wonder why people save tires from later in the race, that's it right there. I mean, there's the 31 car. He's falling like a rock. 12 laps on his tires, more than everybody else on the green. That's it. Well, the 31 was, sorry, Rick. I was going to say the 31's fallen. The 42, he put the afterburners on. He drove right around the 18 of Kyle Busch, took the lead really quite easily, surprisingly. Kyle Larson out in front, Kyle Busch running second now. It's Matt Kenseth, Joey Logano, and Martin Truex Jr., the top five. That's right, Joey Logano in the top five. Logano needing a win if he wants to be able to advance and have a shot at winning the championship. Yeah, a few drivers just amaze me. Door to door like this, it's so easy just to bang and perhaps cut a tire as you see how close the one of Jamie McMurray and the 21 of Ryan Blaney is there. You know, it doesn't take much of a contact to cut a tire. Parker. Guys, Dale Earnhardt Jr. has not had the final series of the Cup Series that he wanted. But look what he's doing here at Richmond. This is one of his favorite racetracks he's driven from starting in the 21st position all the way now into the top 10, fighting for Kevin Harvick there for eighth place. He just came across the radio before this last caution and said the car fired off great and the balance is awesome. It has a lot of lateral grip. He's very happy that 88 car and it's showing right now. And on the long run to four, he had top five lap times all the way until that car. Right, how about the 31 of Ryan Newman behind the 88? We just saw him sinking through the field, but somehow he's got a little traction there, and he's kind of leveled off in the 10th position with those older tires. Logano is just in front of Martin Trex Jr., but Martin Trex Jr. closing the gap. You see Newman has fallen all the way back to 10th. Yeah, but Jeff, if anybody could make old tires work, who can do it? Ryan Newman. We talked to him at the Hall of Fame earlier this year in NASCAR America, and we kind of celebrated the fact that everyone thinks he's the toughest car to pass, and he said, well, you know, I, I looked at my contract, and there was no fine print. You know, the bold print says I'm supposed to go as fast as I can and try to win races. I love the response. Yeah, yeah what was his comment? He said, I'm here, I'm paid to win races, right, and keep a position, not let other people go around me. But, Steve, come on now. If you're Luke Lambert, his crew chief, you're smiling right now, right? Because you've got one more set of tires than most everybody else in the field. They saw what everybody else did. These teams have pitted twice at the end of that stage right there. They only have six sets left. Ryan Newman now has seven sets left. You would want that extra set of tires, wouldn't you, Steve, especially late in a race at Richmond? Well, I would be smiling, but I'd be a little cautious. We're nine laps to into a run that, in theory, could go 100 laps green. So while Ryan Newman is doing a very nice job, they're only going to want this to be a 30, 40, 50 lap run at the most, Rick. Come in, get some fresh tires, and even up with the field. But I like Luke's approach, though, trying something different. Another team gambling for those playoff points. Martin Trucks Jr., he's moving the right direction. He's able to get by Joey Logano for the fourth spot. So Trucks Jr. moves up to fourth. Logano back to fifth. Kenza still running third. Kyle Busch is second. And Kyle Larson out in front. Logano was able to get the win earlier this year from this very racetrack, but then in technical inspection, he failed technical inspection. And so the win was encumbered, meaning he was not going to be locked into the playoffs. And everyone thought he had over a 100-point lead over the cut line. Everyone thought at the time, it's not going to hurt him. He's going to be able to get in by points. Well, now he has plummeted from over 100 points above the cutoff to now below the cutoff by over 100 points in a must-win situation. Kelly. Well, and Rick, I think a lot of people thought Chase Elliott might have a win by this point in the season. We've been talking about how he and Alvin Gustafson really want to improve here at Richmond. Well, they went through a, a series of iterations, as Alan called it, here in the spring race. They felt like they definitely got better then. In practice one, Alan told me they tried something that was terrible in the car. He said it didn't work at all, but at least they could check that box. They felt like by the end of happy hour, they'd actually hit on something. They feel like they're just a step above where they were at spring. Chase Elliott saying, hey, I'm not half bad if we can get going, although just moments ago he said his car was starting to tighten up. 
And as we watch these cars go around, I don't want to look too far in the future, but it strikes me as we sit here that remember next year, race 26 will be at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Richmond has been the cutoff race every year that the NASCAR playoffs has been around, all the way since 2004. This has been it. This has been the cut race. But next year, it's going to move into round one of the playoffs, Rick. So a great battle under the lights here to set the playoffs. Next year, perhaps it'll make the decision he moves through the playoffs. You're watching Monster Energy Cup Series Racing from Richmond. This telecast presented by Smithfield Foods. Kyle Larson still out front. Win the King's car. Now through October 3rd, hustle over to any participating stores, grab some Smithfield Nathans or Eckrich products, and get entered to win a replica of the King's iconic 1970 Superbird. For details, go to winthekeng.com. Kyle Busch able to get by the 42 of Kyle Larson and take the lead back away. And you see Matt Kenseth right there coming into the picture as well. So, Jeff, I was asking myself as I watched this, do you think Kyle Busch, he lost that race last night in the Xfinity race on the long run. Brad Kozlowski ran him down. Do you think earlier when we saw the 42 just go by him and leave him relatively easily that that's Kyle Busch saying, you know what, I saw this picture last night. Go ahead, use your rear tires. I'm going to be a little more patient. Yeah, you, just, you never know. It could be set up. I thought last night's setup had a lot to do with it. It could be have it to, uh, tonight as well. You just never know. These, these drivers, they're not going to tell you. You know, they're not going to get on the radio and say, hey, I'm going to take it easy. They're not going to give that strategy away. Kenseth has led the most laps in this race at 89. Kyle Larson led 19 there while he was out front. Kyle Busch has led 16, and now we'll try to add to that as we see the 20 of Matt Kenseth also getting by Kyle Larson. And Kenseth now trying to get back to the point. Yeah, remember, Matt Kenseth led 100, the first 160 laps, three laps here in April as well. And, you know, that's one thing that we've seen with Matt Kenseth and his team this year is that they put themselves in position, but they haven't been able to execute. Can he overcome the little mistake getting into turn three, slid the left front brake, cause a caution? Can he overcome that? Can, you know, not let that get you behind? And so much is made of taking care of these tires. Still out front, Kyle Busch, Kenseth running second. Dave. On that discussion about the 18 and last night, did talk to crew chief Adam Stevens about that and Kyle's run tonight. He said, you know, it won't be a whole lot different tonight. We feel like the car will be a little bit better on those terms, but that's not something you can just automatically take out of the race car when you come to the track. And so a lot of these cars uh, over the short run are good for Kyle. 
expect him if he has a short run at the end of the race to be extremely good. Well, as we saw this, or as we watched this battle for the lead, we mentioned that the 14 of Boyer had his speeding penalty. Well, he's not the only must-win car. 22 of Joe Logano up to fifth, 77 of Eric Jones. That rookie, we talked about him at the top of the show, Jeff. Well, he's recovered, worked on the handling of that race car. He's up to seventh. While that's not leading laps, and that's not winning speed yet, that's moving in the right direction. Well, Matt Kenseth's not in a must-win position right now, but remember, Matt Kenseth does not have a ride for next year. Imagine if you've worked in your job for 65 years and somebody walks up to you and says, hey, we don't have a job next year. Imagine how that would make you feel. Well, that's how mad Matt Kenseth is also. He wants to prove to the world that he can do it, but mainly prove to himself. He has pride. He's a champion. He wants to win this stage. He wants to win this race. Right now running in the second spot about two car lengths behind race leader Kyle Busch. Kyle Busch won the first stage so that's one more playoff point that he can add to the points that he's going to be taking advantage of once the playoffs do start. And this is just how good these drivers are. I ask myself is Kyle Busch not as good as Matt Kenseth or is Kyle Busch comfortable with a two car length lead. That's really as hard as he needs to run. He's the leader. He doesn't have to go out and lead by three seconds. He just has to be in front of the 20. Marty. Rick this is typical Richmond. You got to have two screens so you can watch all the battles at the racetrack. Matt Kenseth certainly trying to tack down his teammate Kyle Busch and catch the lead. And it's funny they asked him about are you going to pay attention to the point standings throughout the evening. The one and the 24 and where you are he said. I'm not going to pay attention to that. He said, this is one of our best racetracks. My job, take advantage of that. And certainly they're running better, Jeff. You know that. They're going in the right direction. He said, it's fun to come to a racetrack when we're running like this. We have positive momentum. So not only is this team thinking, hey, we're going to be in the playoffs, they're thinking they can get in the playoffs and make some noise. And I'm sure you, I'm sure you would agree, Mr. Burton. Oh, I definitely agree. I think Matt Kenseth has a lot of race wins left in him. I, I think that he's a championship winning guy, and he was in the past, and he is currently. But tonight, Drove into turn three underneath Danica and he just locked the brakes up and when he did it started a chain of events. Yeah so he created the yellow all the leaders came to pit road but not every car came to pit road. Brad Keselowski the 27 to 17 stay on the racetrack that puts Matt Kenseth fourth on their free start and when they drop the green he just gets stuck behind those cars it's a melee he loses that track position and he has yet to get back to the point. I didn't do anything wrong at all just guys in front of him had older tires Kyle Busch on the bottom able to turn left at the start finish line and just easily clear the guys with the old tires so Matt Kenseth still trying to overcome that. Kenseth running in the second spot behind Kyle Busch but hasn't been able to close the gap inside of about a car length and a half of Kyle Busch and, and Steve you mentioned maybe that's Kyle Busch running just fast enough to stay that distance in front of Matt Kenseth not pushing it too hard trying to make sure those tires don't wear out in a long run. It's time now for the subway fresh take. Listen into the communication from Clint Boyer and team. I forgot how bad these drive back here. Yeah we just got to be careful take care of our tires so we don't fall off if this goes long you know. You can man good runs off. Still got a long ways to go. A lot can happen. Yeah, that's great advice because you know when you get behind and especially in the situation that Clint Boyer's in you tend to try to push too hard try to get it all back too quickly. We talked about tires talked about conservative you can't get it back in a few laps it's going to take the entire race to go from the back back to the front. Marty. And Jeff that's exactly what they've told him on the radio He probably used up our car officially he restarted 33rd he went to 21st and just stopped. You saw that frustration with Daniel Suarez a moment ago kind of gave him a little nudge saying hey I want to get by you. I think I'm faster but Boyer did also come on the radio say this is all I've got right now guys. He moved quickly 33rd to 21st but it's taken a long time to go right now 21st to 20th. Right? He's up to 20th out front Kyle Busch still holding off Matt Kenseth.
And welcome back to Richmond Raceway as we're getting ready for 50 laps, the final 50 laps of stage two. There's nothing like attending a NASCAR race. This season has been full of some of the most intense side by side racing in years. We've seen it right here at Richmond. A lot of dramatic moments. Visit NASCAR.com slash tickets if you want to purchase tickets, make new NASCAR memories and an upcoming race near you again. It is the Federated Auto Parts 400 that Kyle Busch is leading, but now it's Martin Shrex Jr. who has been able to get by Matt Kenseth. And Shrex Jr., we mentioned it in the first stage. Surprisingly, as you get to the second half of the stage or closer to the end, it's always Martin Shrex Jr. who seems to be rising to the top of the scoring pylon. Well, and this would be a good test for the 18. We will see if he has any more left in the bank or if he was just staying ahead of the 20 a minimal amount to save tires or if this is max speed because the 78 is definitely going to continue to push the issue. That didn't seem contested at all. The 18 was about two lanes on corner exit lower than the 78 Jeff. Yeah, Martin Truex Jr. moving around right now just trying some different lines. Great thing about this short track you can run all over it and try the middle third lane bottom right now big run on the bottom. Almost looks like it's going to be easy for Martin Trex Jr. to get by the 18 of Kyle Busch. Martin Trex Jr. takes the lead at Richmond. One new leader, 78, come on. New leader, 78 of Martin Trex Jr., but just as quickly as we say that, the 18 of Kyle Busch trying to duck back to the inside. Want to take a look at tonight's Toyota driver update. Top three, Truex Jr., Kyle Busch, and Matt Kenseth. Kyle Busch already won stage number one and now fighting for stage two. Marty. 45 laps to go in this stage, but if Martin Truex Jr. can indeed win this stage, it would be his 17th stage win of the season. Just amazing. You know, he told me earlier this week, it's really been a dream season for us. But as Cole always says, as Crew Chief Cole Pern, listen, we stuck together and now we're good together. That's the best part about this whole season is we built this together as a team. Now we're succeeding as a team, Dave. And Marty, to a degree, Kyle Busch is not racing the 78 of Martin Truex Jr. He told us in countdown he's racing for second place in the regular season. Truex already has first place wrapped up. Bush wants to finish ahead of Larson. He was ahead of him by nine points coming in tonight. And if he finishes ahead of Kyle Larson at the end of the evening in the regular season, he'll get an additional two points over Larson in third, Marty. The third Toyota up there in the top three, Dave, is, of course, Matt Kenseth. And I found it interesting what he said in Countdown to Green when he said, I don't look at this race much different than the rest of the season, the first 25 races. We have the same opportunity tonight we've had all season and the same sense of urgency. We've wanted to get to victory lane since Daytona in February. They want to do it tonight. Matt Kenseth with an excellent shot to get win number one at an opportune time, the final race of the regular season, Rick. And he's currently running in that third spot, chasing after Martin Trex Jr. and Kyle Busch. Let's go to a special nonstop brought to you by NASCAR Heat 2 video game. In NASCAR Heat 2, anyone can be a winner. We're both competitors, but sometimes Brad takes it a little too far. I'm a master of deception. Brad cheats. Yo, what's that? Stop it. There's something, there's something wrong with us. Hmm. Joey just making excuses. Woo! Includes $50 NASCAR race ticket. Rated E for everyone. Martin Trucks Jr. out front by eight tenths of a second. Kyle Busch running second. There's Eric Jones making the move on Chase Elliott. Two of the young drivers in NASCAR. Like in the looks of the 77 tonight, Rick. As I keep saying, it's not winning speed yet. But with 239 to go, it doesn't have to be winning speed yet. And sometimes it maybe is never winning speed. But it's very hard to win for 10th or 15th, right, Jeff? you got to be up in those top five for maybe a late race restart or for something to fall your way. Eric Jones is 21 years old, just getting by Chase Elliott, who also is 21. Parker. Well, guys, I found it interesting when talking to Eric Jones before this race. 
I asked him, what do you think of this place? It's a unique short track. And he told me, you know, in the Xfinity car, I didn't really like it. And I haven't really liked it until I got in the Cup car. And it's starting to come around to me. And that's what this race has done. That car has gotten consistently better each and every time they've been able to come down pit road. And Jeff, I know you can talk about this. When you have a good car, that makes you like a racetrack a lot more as a driver than when you suffered at a place. Oh, it makes a huge difference. But I think it's important to remember how bad this 77 car was when this race started. He was talking about it would not turn, made no rear grip, was falling to the back. They've made this car much better. He hasn't given up as a rookie. The team hadn't given up. They've worked together to get this car in the position. It did not look good when this race started. Kelly. Well, Rick, how about this too with Brad Keselowski? Remember, they stayed out under a caution at stage one that gave him the lead, but then on old tires, he dropped back outside the top 20. Well, now here in stage two, he's worked his way back inside the top 10. He's running eighth now. He has an extra set of sticker tires than most of the field that could come in handy late in this race. And when I talked to his crew chief, Paul Wolf, before the race started, he told me that coming into this, they really felt like this was a race of opportunity for them to win. He said, some days we show up to the track, we know we're off the mark from the Toyotas. This is the place that we feel like the arrow is equalized a bit and we can really go after a win. That's what their strategy is. They don't really care so much about the stage points. It's all about victory lane for that two car. Let's listen into some communication from the two team. Two best cars visually are us and the 78. I say that visually based on how they can just turn off the center and drive under people. We do it differently for sure, but those are the two cars that get under people. Fastest car on the track right here, man. Really good job. Oh, man, I love when the spotter says something like that as a crew chief puts a big smile on your face when he says your car is one of the best looking ones through the corner. And you know what this team needs too for this strategy to work? They need long green flag runs because you need to put a lot of people a lap down. Because even if you have tires and restart 28 with eight with 15 laps to go, you can't get through that many people. Right now, there's still 28 cars on the lead lap. So they're wanting long green flag runs. They need Martin Truex Jr. right now to put people laps down. So late in the race, you know, they have a tire advantage. They don't have to go through as many people to get back to the lead. Back in April, Team Penske finished one and two. It was Joey Logano who got the win, and Brad Keselowski was second. But Brad actually led the most laps of the two. He led 110 laps between he and Joey. And for an update, let's go to Rutledge Wood. Rick, something that we see different here at the night races than we do during the daytime are these full cool pit box signs. You see them over a lot of different crew signs. The really interesting thing is most of these are made by a former NASCAR tire guy, Dave Collins, at Mooresville Sign and Design in Mooresville, North Carolina. You can look down the pit road, you see all these bright different signs from the 42 to 78 to 22, but really my favorite's got to be Austin Dillon's with his AD logo in that bullseye. Something different you see here at the night race, the teams really get into it, guys. Absolutely, and it's difficult to see your pit sign, so when it stands out, it helps out, right, Jeff? Well, what I was going to say is that there's a purpose for that. It looks cool, but they do it because it helps. When when you used to come down pit road, it was very dark. You couldn't see. One or two people had those, and it completely messed up pit road because they were so bright that it messed up everybody else's sign, so you had to get one just to break even. So nighttime racing, those illuminated signs, they helped so much being able to find your pit box. Racing under the lights at Richmond Raceway. It's Martin Truex Jr. out front. Kenseth still chasing, running second. We go NASCAR nonstop.
aerial coverage provided by our partners at Smithfield Foods. What a gorgeous evening it is here in Richmond, Virginia. You're watching the Monster Energy Cup Series racing from Richmond Raceway. Still out front, Martin Truex Jr. has a about a two second lead over Matt Kenseth. But I think all eyes right now are looking at drivers like Eric Jones in the 77, as well as Dale Earnhardt Jr. in that 88. And Joey Logano in the 22. Logano up to fourth. Eric Jones is fifth. Earnhardt Jr. running eighth. Yeah, Logano going in a positive direction just past Kyle Busch took over that spot. So Logano moving moving forward. Yeah, how about Eric Jones continue to make his car better. Chris Gale has worked on it all night long. He's up to fifth. And Dale Earnhardt Jr. up to the eighth position battling this weekend without his crew chief. Greg Ives not in the pit box, suspended for a lug nut violation. Travis Mack taking the first shot at crew chiefing. This is actually Dale Jr.'s first ever race at Hendrick Motorsports with the interim crew chief. And Parker, so far the 88, improving all night long up inside the top 10. That he has, Steve. But let's take a look at that 77 of Eric Jones. I got to speak to his crew chief, Chris Gale, before this race, and I found it really interesting what he told me. A lot of rookies enter a season thinking, you know, I want to get a good start to the season. I want to finish top 40 in points and win the rookie of the year, but not that 77 team. He said they started this year thinking we want to make the playoffs. And so as they came in this race knowing they had to win, they said it's been no different than the rest of the season because we wanted to get in Ricky Lane and we believe we can be a contender if we can get in the playoffs. As you see him fighting the 22 of Joe Logano right there. Meanwhile, the 88, as you mentioned, has getting steadily better. He started this race 21st, has gotten himself in the top 10, has a great car on the long run, but right now just suffering a bit of loose on entry and loose on exit, but he's been working with the track bar inside the car, and that's been helping a lot, Marty. Fun to watch this battle between the 22 and the 78. Joey Logano holding on to fourth right now. Both of those cars are catching Kyle Larson for third, who's right in front of them. Joey Logano saying the car very good in the center. A little too free on exit. He's adjusting that with the track bar. He said this is the toughest spot this 22 team has ever been in. And this is the team who's nearly won the championship the last couple of years as finally Eric Jones does go by for that fourth position. He said, but I like this weekend when I showed up. You see how teams react under pressure. Our team had a great attitude. Everybody came here with thinking we had a chance to win this race. And right now, Joey Logano in that fifth spot trying to hang on it onto it. His teammate catching him a little bit here, but it's amazing. Two teams with must-win situations right now in the top five. Pretty cool, guys. Yeah, exactly. And that's what we talked about at the beginning of the show is those three teams that we had focused on all must-win situations for them all, and all of them running right now in the top ten. Man, look at Clint Boyer on the right-hand side of the screen. Remember, he was penalized, had to start at the back of this line. He has worked himself up to 16th, so a nice charge back toward the front. Still a lot of work to go for the 14, though, Marty. Yeah, and, and 33rd to 16th, that's pretty amazing. And it was funny, we talked earlier about how he kind of settled out in 21st. But as this run went longer, they got better. They kind of hung there for a while in 20th, and now they started going forward once again. So clearly they have a long run car. And Steve, when you have a car like that and a crew chief like Mike, Mike, Mike Ravitch, you know, sometimes you have to take advantage of that. This long run really paying off for this 14 team in Clint Boyer. Yeah, I mean, rarely, Marty, is my recollection did I ever have a long run car where we actually got long runs the race always seemed to fall the wrong way so the 14 car does have to use that if that's his strength and that has to be the strength of Brad Keselowski as well on the left hand side of the screen you see three positions stacked up right there in front of them that is fifth fourth and third right in front of the two of Brad Keselowski this has been an impressive charge Kelly updated us on their strategy he has charged from the 20th position on this run earlier in the day Steve you mentioned that a long run that's not 25 or 40 laps it's somewhere near 80 laps well we're coming up on the longest green flag run we have had in this race already have run 79 green flag laps and now 80 and with 11 to go in the stage now it's going to be try to get those positions but also you have to be careful this is the time in the run where brake abuse can damage those front tires so even though this is a great battle for position they also have to just be mechanically aware of how hard they've pushed their race car. And you watch the cars as you see them coming off the corner. They're all slipping and sliding. They just, you have no grip. They've eaten these tires off. They'd love to stop right now and get tires, but you just can't do it. Ten laps to go before the stage in. You're just going to have to ride it out, but they are on the very edge of the moment. And again, the first two stages were 100 laps. The final stage, 200 laps. That's what they have coming in front of them. Marty. 
Guys, let's give a call to Ryan Newman. Remember, stayed out when everybody else pitted the last time, restarted with the lead 80 laps ago, and he has fallen back only to 10th. In fact, the last five laps, he's been one of the top five fastest cars on the racetrack. So great call by Luke Lambert. They, too, in the category with Brad Kozlowski on the right-hand side of your screen in that green car, they have an extra set of tires versus everybody else. So, Steve, now I think that move definitely paying off for this 31 team, just a handful of laps left in the stage. It's a great, great uh, example of the race car driver doing what he needs to do behind the wheel to help the crew chief work his strategy. Sometimes it isn't always about passing cars. Sometimes it's about not being passed. But I don't think we can say enough about Dale Earnhardt Jr. Much like the 77 of Eric Jones, I'm not sure he has winning speed yet. But what a turn for this 88 car. I don't think we've seen him passing cars inside the top 10 in multiple weeks. And let's listen in to what it would mean to Dale Earnhardt Jr. He had this to say earlier. I think it'd be awesome. I mean, if we could come out of here win, uh, with a win, it'd be quite the, quite the surprise for uh, not only all you guys, but us included. We found a couple of things I think could help our car in the long run, and, and I'm kind of anxious to see if those things will really work out for us in the race. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it'd be, biggest, it'd be one of the biggest top – Top five wins of my career if we were to do that tonight, considering the circumstances, win and get in, and, and we'd be in the chase and all that good stuff. So that'd be fun. I mean, think about Jeff Gordon winning in his final season. The emotion standing on the front stretch at Martinsville, what that meant to him. Tony Stewart winning in his final season. Here's Dale Earnhardt Jr. in his final season. It looks like the pay window has closed. One more race to make the playoffs. You heard it from the man himself. A top five win. This is a guy that's won two Daytona 500s. So to put anything in the top five of his career would be a huge, huge event. Hey, Dave, what's going on with the 10 car? Just noticing what a good run this is for Danica. Up nine positions during this particular run. When I might have talked to the team earlier this afternoon, they said, yeah, we're pretty confident about this weekend. She's been running very well. And did you notice the car? I said, what do you mean? They said, her brand's on it. She's been so excited this weekend to talk about the Warrior brand and it being on the 10 car this weekend. Yeah, Dave, she just passed Chase Elliott for 11th spot. So she's having a very solid run. And her teammate, Kurt Busch, is an eighth. Her other two teammates behind her. So very good run for Danica Patrick tonight. Trying to break into the top ten, a battle for six on the right side of your screen. Again, that's Kyle Larson that has it, but Dale Earnhardt Jr. wants it. Larson way up the racetrack, and it looks like he's got some debris coming out from behind that car. Yeah, he's so far up the racetrack. I'm, I'm surprised he would be able to get in the corner very well. Typically, it'll pick up all that debris on the tires and really slide around for just a little bit. You can see how much he's sliding. Still trying to hang on and trying to not give up that spot to Dale Earnhardt Jr. Look at that. He went so far up the racetrack so quickly, I thought he had a problem. He's just looking for different asphalt. He's trying to find somewhere on the racetrack that other people aren't running. Hey, no Jeff, surprise. you're so right. You're so right. So everybody's out of tires right now. He's just searching for where to beat that 88. Running the cushion. The yep. dirt racer has found the cushion here at Richmond. No surprise there. Right up against the wall or doesn't want to get to the wall, but running a lot higher line than everybody else is Kyle Larson trying to stay in front of the 88, trying to find some grip on this racetrack. And you see how much speed it helps him on corner exit. You know, he actually gives up some on entry, but he has to, he makes it all back on exit, Rick. Look once again, who's working their way through three and four. And this will be his 53rd playoff point. Martin Trex Jr. wins stage two. Fifty three playoff points for Martin Truex Jr. Again the playoff points work. You win a point for the stage. You win five for a race. He's already accumulated fifty three points. That's including the regular season points that he was able to win for winning. that. those are fifteen extra.
Stage two winner Martin Truex Jr. And he has been impressive all season long. Let's go to Parker. What an impressive run for his teammate Eric Jones in a must win position has driven himself all the way up to the third position. He's going to do four Goodyear tires in Sunoco Field in the 77 and he told his crew chief my four drivers where I'm killing them right now. Parker for Martin Truex Jr. That's his 17th stage one of the season now 53 playoff points in the bank. He said his car was too tight. He needs to turn the center better. He's up two on the track bar. That's a fairly big adjustment inside the car. Matt Kenda said the entry is tolerable. Center is not bad for his car but the exit could be a lot better a little too free on the exit. They're going to make an air pressure adjustment to tighten up that race car. Truex hold serve on pit road Rick. Yeah the race off pit road brought to you by NASCAR Heat 2 video game and Truex Jr. and Kenseth both holding on to those spots. But look at, at the bottom of that screen. Clint Boyer making up five spots coming off 10th the pit road. So an impressive run for a guy who needs to win. Yeah, I think that's huge. I think Clint Boyer picking up five spots on pit road. Remember he had driven up to 15 from the back of the pack. That's the team. They made a mistake. They put him in the back. The pit crew got penalized coming in and picking up five spots. That's huge to get back into the top 10. Yeah, and think about this now. We're through the second stage. There are no more breaks in this race. The next guaranteed stop is going to be the checkered flag. So we'll have to see where the cautions fall. But we've had a couple long runs. The second stage basically went green the entire way. So now with 200 to go, Rick, you can't make enough fuel. The decisions for these crew chiefs are going to be more difficult as we approach the checkered flag, as we approach the pay window. The chance to make the playoffs is open. And which crew chief can do it with pit strategy? Which driver can do it on the racetrack? And once again, we've got a restart coming up. Well, NASCAR on NBCSN is brought to you by Smithfield Foods. Bank of America. Life better connected. And by Mountain Dew. Do the do. Martin Truex Jr. won the race off of pit road. He and Matt Kenseth are going to be fighting door to door for the race lead on this restart. Rut. Rick, Richmond Raceways, we know it's going to be totally different when the fans come back here next year because this week they're breaking ground on their reimagined project. Right over my shoulder where you see those big inflatable Toyota letters, that's actually going to be the home of the new Xfinity Series garage. The cars will come into the garage off of the back stretch, come in a little bit later. You can see it's a $30 million reimagination of this track. The only building on the inside that will still be here is the infield care center. You can see the garage is completely redone and that huge area for fans there in turns one and two it's going to be this great place where fans can get up close and do like they did today. See that drivers meeting in person. But I can tell you this from being back here. Burton you know but the moment that these guys saw pit open I'm telling you I thought there was another restart going on. Those guys were going so fast to get in that line. How hard is it to watch when you're in that moment and everybody moves up to get you know every inch they can. How are these guys not hitting each other every time that happens. Yeah, as soon as cars start hitting pit road right, if you're in the back of the pack it's your job to close up to them as quickly as you can. The problem is you're going way faster than pit road speed You get to that pit road speed entrance. You got to back that thing up. And you see a lot of cars get into other cars at the beginning of pit road speed just because of that. Kelly, what's going on with Harvick? Well, we saw him drop back during that last stage. Well, that was because he didn't like the balance of his car. Well, it turns out that he had run over a brake rotor coming off pit road the previous time he came to stop. That put a hole in the nose, which kind of killed the arrow on that car. So they had a lengthy pit stop just now to make the changes and also fix. There you see the damage there on the right front. Uh, to fix that damage, Harvick, it looks like we'll restart this one 23rd. He's back there away as we have one to go before the green flag comes out one more time. Well, so now with under two ha 200 laps to go in this race, drivers that need a win, Joey Logano, he's running in the third position. Eric Jones, he's running in the sixth position. And Dale Earnhardt Jr. is running in seventh. Clint Boyer also in the top ten. He's running tenth. Drivers that have to win if they want a shot at the championship. And yeah, we talked about Clint Boyer's team doing such a good job. But Eric Jones, he pitted third and came out sixth. So he's got a little bit of ground to make up. Up front, Martin Truex Jr., Matt Kenseth. Into the Geico restart zone. Green flag back in the air.
Great restart for Kyle Larson. Can he hold on to that spot? Eric Jones up to third. What a move by this young driver. You have to wonder at what point will these guys start to panic just a little bit. 212 laps gone. Think about Logano where he's running. He will not, you know, running fifth does him no good. Running sixth does him no good. He has to win. At what point do they start pushing and push too hard? They're not going to be able to make it without coming back to pit road. So there will at least be one more time that they will be on pit road. And I'm waiting to see. You mentioned Joey Logano. I'm waiting to see Joey Logano's teammate Brad Kozlowski. In that last run, he started all the way back in the 20th position, drove right up inside the top six. So now that he has a little bit of track position on this run, he's already passed his teammate, got up into the sixth position. Can he continue to move forward, run down the 20 of Matt Kenseth, perhaps the 41 of Kurt Busch? On that last run, Rick, I had Brad Keselowski as the best car on the racetrack lap times-wise. And on the long run, his teammate Joey Logano was right there with him, and the team did their job on pit road as well. They gained one spot for Joey Logano, who's right behind his teammate, Brad Keselowski. And what they really want, Todd Gordon told him already, a longer run. We are the best car on the racetrack. They did suffer a little bit towards the very end of that run. But I tell you what, middle part of the run, Steve, they got an excellent car for this 22. And now you got to start talking about them as being a team that can get that win done and find their way in the playoffs. The problem I have with it, Marty, is you are right. There is a point where this 22 really comes on. But look how much ground he loses early. He's lost a position to the two of Brad Keselowski. Now the other must-win car, the 14 of Clint Boyer, has recovered from his issue on pit road. He's now putting pressure on the 22. So even though your car comes in, if you lose three seconds and then gain three seconds, it's a net wash. You're not making any time up on the field. Yeah, don't forget, we talked about Eric Jones restarting six. Well, he found his way to third. He, he was able to take his car, work the outside lane, and get it to third. So not only is Boyer putting pressure on Logano, Eric Jones is getting away from him. Hey, Jeff, we have... Clint Boyer now in the eighth position. And I know that in the pre-race show, I heard that you had sat down with Clint Boyer and talked to him about this very situation. What will you do? What will your ethics be like when you come to the end of the race and you have to try to barrel through potentially people? This is what they had. This is what he had to say earlier. When's that moment coming in our sport? Is, is it could it be Saturday night where that win in your end mentality makes you change your ethics, makes you do something that you normally wouldn't do. If I'm running 10th, am I going to bulldoze through nine cars to, to get my way to the, you know, to the win? No. If I'm running second with, with two to go and the guy's reachable, I'm going to be apologizing after the race. <laughs> He's going to be disappointed in me. Um, that will happen, you know, but put anybody, you know, with their back up against the wall in that situation, they're going to do that. And Right now, Clint Boyer finds himself with his back up against the wall. As you see, the 20 of Matt Kenseth is going to lose a spot to the 22 of Joey Logano. So Logano takes sixth away from Kenseth. Kenseth drops back. Boyer still running in the eighth position. Yeah, Kenseth struggling a little bit right here. Look, if he's got tight. Well, we've heard from a few of our pit reporters how. The weather is starting to change. Now the ambient temperature is going down. That's the next big shift that will happen in the racetrack. As those temperatures continue to drop, the handling will change on these race cars. There they are, the drivers that need a win. If they want to clinch a berth in the playoffs, Eric Jones is third, Logano seventh, Boyer eighth, Earnhardt Jr. tenth, and Suarez 14. Don't look now. Brad Keselowski, though, got by the 41 of Kurt Busch. That puts Brad in the fourth position. You see him right there on the outside lane. 
This two car, not only does he have a good race car, he has an extra set of tires. Now, we haven't had a lot of cautions. Will those extra set pay off? Right now, not looking so. We'd have to have a rash of cautions. I'm not sure they're going to need an extra set right now. They just have a fast race car. Well, that was, you know, he took a gamble and gave some track position up to be able to do it, but it didn't hurt him. He's in fourth spot right now. You know, he's not like he's in 20th with an extra set of tires. If they, they don't need him, he's got enough speed to still win this race. Yeah, and as you can imagine, Brad Keselowski has been pretty quiet on the radio. Sounds like he's happy with his race car at the end of stage two there. He just said, hey, the balance is really pretty good. He just felt like he got a little bit too aggressive on that last long green flag run. He said about three quarters of the way through that run, I started to burn off the rear tires. And the team kind of responded with, well, hey, no kidding. You went from 20th up to six. Good job. So Brad Keselowski's definitely got a good piece to work with tonight. Well, Kelly, that's a great point. When you get behind, there's only one way to get it back, and that's go go drive hard. You can't pace yourself. You just got to go make the best lap time you can. When you have that track position, Steve, you now can manage a little bit better. You can just be a little bit easier on those tires versus having to just go as hard as you can every single lap. Marty, what's going on with the 20 of Kenseth? He seems to be falling back. Yeah, keen observation by Jeff a moment ago. Matt saying the front end of the car just not working as good. He said, this is all I've got right now, hanging on to it. Said the car just won't turn in the center of the corner. Maybe you can pick that up a little bit, Jeff. They had had a problem with the car being actually too free on exit on the last run, so perhaps an over-adjustment on that last pit stop. But Matt Kins is not quite as quick as he was earlier in the race right now in seven. Yeah, Marty, what it appears to me is that the 20 car was very quick when he would land into the corner. So as soon as you get to the corner, his car turned very well early in the race. Right now, when he lands on the corner entry, the car just does not rotate. Kenseth has fallen back to the seventh position. Boyer right behind him in eighth, but it's still Martin Truex Jr. Stage two winner out front as we go NASCAR nonstop. You're watching Monster Energy Cup Series Racing from Richmond, telecasts presented by Smithfield Foods. 
Get NASCAR coverage when you're on the go with NASCAR Mobile. The official app of NASCAR puts race coverage and live in-car cameras right at your fingertips. You can even listen to drivers and teams discuss race strategy. Download for free at NASCAR.com slash mobile. Mark Truex Jr. has about a second lead over Kyle Larson. Eric Jones has moved all the way up to third. Then it's Brad Kozlowski and Kurt Busch riding out the top five. Kurt Busch making his way up into the top five. First time we've mentioned his name tonight. Again running in that second spot is Kyle Larson. Dave. And Rick what a regular season he's had in addition to the three wins seven times Kyle Larson finished runner up second in a race and that's important because one of those times was New Hampshire a racetrack they're going back to and a racetrack by which they pattern tonight's setup off of it's been good for Kyle so far the problem for him is at the end of the runs he's having just a little bit problem having enough drive to keep up with some of the front runners. Kyle Larson holding on to that second spot and so many times he's finished second but this year has been his really breakout year the top two we have seen this happen all season long Martin Shrugs Junior and Kyle Larson have battled for wins throughout the 2017 season and right behind them it's Aaron Jones let's listen into his radio what we've done the last few weeks yep we've talked about it we're all going to be on it here had a luck that issue there well we won't have it next time Careful. Want to break that down, crew chief? <laughs> Your guess is as good as mine. Apparently, it's something that they've had discussions with off the, you know, something they've discussed off the racetrack and off the radio. I think perhaps it goes back to pit road. They lost a few spots on pit road. Um, it was a good to the point conversation. I didn't hear a lot of whining or complaining. Point being that I think everyone sounded very focused. And sometimes that's what it takes is, hey, we had this conversation. Let's not talk about it here. It doesn't help the task at hand, which is we need to find two more positions, get up here and try to take the lead. And yeah, you mentioned find those two positions. I think it's important to remember right here on the left hand side of the screen, there's a playoff bubble. So you got Matt Kenseth who's done a good job of getting points during the stages. He has worked himself pretty far ahead of Jamie McMurray right now. So Right now, if Eric Jones were to find a way to win this race, or Joey Logano would try to find a way to win this race, Jamie McMurray would be the guy going home, not advancing to the playoffs. And guys, it has been a very impressive night for Eric Jones and also for that race car because at the point they are right now, Steve, I want to talk to you about this. They've basically been nitpicking that race car. He thought the drive off before this last caution was basically perfect. It was where he was beating everyone. So his crew chief, Chris Gale, asked him, do you want me to help you turn the center? He said, you know, maybe that'll help just a little bit. But now on this run, he finds it's over-rotating the center, and that can be a frustrating thing when you have that car so close, you're not able to hit the lead, but you're also not able to get it perfect, Steve. And I just think that's got to be tough in the position they're in. Well, the other problem they're having is they're comparing to the leaders, but I think the best car on the racetrack is right here, this lime green two of Brad Keselowski. We've said it and said it again. Well, here he is working to the outside of the 77. And this is going to be the challenge for these must win cars the 77 the 22 whoever it may be because these other cars these veterans they are not going to let these young guys have a win it was never more clear than after the Michigan race where those furniture row teammates ran both in the front of the race Martin obviously from the way you restarted it didn't look like you cared very much that Eric really couldn't have used a win for the playoffs um, what does that supposed to mean? Well, it means that you did, we don't have team orders. Nobody lets each other win. I mean, you know, he's going to win some races. His turn will come. My question is: Is would any thought of letting him win no. not come across you because no. of the way you race? No, or? it doesn't. That's not how we race, Bob. Hmm. Nobody out there races that way. Nobody's going to give a cup win up. They're too hard to get. Do, does the fact that five playoff points also are involved does Absolutely. that matter? Absolutely. So Rick Bob Pockers was trying to get to the question of would you let your teammate win or should you let him win because the 77 of Eric Jones was running second to Martin Trex Jr. in that race in Michigan. But I loved even more than the answer how he answered. He didn't even let him get the question out. Like, look, don't even ask it. I don't want to hear it. It doesn't matter. I'm here. I'm here to win for myself. It gets me fired up when I hear that response because that is racing. That's how I was raised. That's how you were raised, Jeff. And that's what we expect from these race car drivers on the racetrack. There's no place for it. Absolutely. If, if I'm going to come watch a race, 
I want to know that the people are giving 100%. If they're not giving 100%, I'm not coming to watch. So there's no, no place for the NASCAR race and letting a guy win. Do you know how hard it is to win a cup race? Yeah. When, I walk, when I walk in the room that I have that have the trophies in it, every one of those means something to me. Everyone has its own life. It has its own story. You think I'm going to give one of those things up? There's no way. Dave. Hey, Stephen, Jeff, how many times this year have you said about a crew chief, why not take a swing? Why not take a chance, right? A lot of times. So Matt McCall took that swing on Jamie McMurray. In fact, he called it a pretty good wedge change for McMurray. It just made the car awful. It is now very too loose in and free off as well, and he's lost positions on this run. Not looking good for McMurray here, but the night is not over. And as you guys mentioned before, uh, if a certain car wins the race, it's not a new winner. It might not be awful for Jamie at the end. No, with 151 still to go, they're going to have at least one, probably multiple opportunities to try to work on this car. Well, they are, but he's the last car on the lead lap right now, and Martin Truex Jr. is only about seven, eight, ten car lengths behind him. So, yeah, you get yourself a lap down, it'll be hard to get it back. And Eric Jones going the wrong direction. He's had a lot of momentum over the last five races. Last five races, all top ten finishes. As a matter of fact, the last three have all been top five finishes for Eric Jones. And right now, he's struggling to stay in the top five. He's currently running fourth. And Kurt Busch is fighting him for that fourth position. He's probably going to have to give it up here pretty soon. Otherwise, Kurt's going to be frustrated and might move him out of the way. So Kurt Busch works to the inside. Eric Jones will fall back to the fifth position now. So he's staying in the top five, but Eric Jones needs a win if he wants to fight for a championship, and this is rookie season. All these positions matter. I mean, they all matter. We just saw they came on pit road, lost pit, lost positions. You need to stay in that top three or top four to have a shot on one of these late race restarts. Again, the drivers needing a win. If they want to get into the playoffs, Jones, Logano, Boyer, Bernhardt Jr., Suarez. Not the problem for Martin Shrex Jr., who's out in front, has almost a two-second lead over Kyle Larson. Martin Shrex Jr., teammate to Eric Jones. And now you're starting to see Clint Boyer working his way to the back bumper of that 22 of Joey Logano. Try to topside now. I've been watching Clint. He turns, he enters high and leaves low. Gets a big run on corner exit. And three and four. He's running a pretty traditional line. Left side tires right on the yellow line. And a good run to the inside of that 22 of Logano. So hard to pull that pass off. It's hard to get the rear tires to hook up. So see Clint Boyer, what he's doing, how high he is. On corner entry, gets to the middle of the corner, gets the car to turn. Now he goes to the throttle. Now when he leaves, he doesn't have to turn the wheel because he's already going straight. That helps the rear tires hook up. Marty. And Jeff, if you're Joey Logano, you don't want to let that 14 by because ooh, into the wall Danica is the Patrick. 10 of Danica Patrick. And after having a great run, Danica Patrick the wrong way and got into the wall. She was running in the 18th position. She had been fighting to get almost into the top 10. Let's take a look at what happened. Austin Dillon right behind her. Both of them way up the racetrack. I don't know. I, I, I mean, obviously, they made contact. But Austin was much higher than I would have anticipated him being. Austin way up the racetrack, and Danica didn't actually make contact with the wall. I don't know how. Yeah. That's amazing she didn't hit the wall. Yeah, I don't know if they're done uh, having a discussion right here. As you see them get close to each other on the racetrack right here, I think Danica has something to say to Austin Dillon, perhaps not. Yeah, she was way up the racetrack, and Austin followed her up there. So that brings the caution out for the fifth time. As the two still close to each other under this caution. And cars are on their way onto pit road now. Parker. 
Eric Jones in a must-win position, fell back to the fifth position on that run, remarking to his crew chief that the car was just lacking overall grip. His crew chief, Chris Gale, said, I'm going to keep you calm, I'm going to work on it, we're going to get it back to where it was. He's going to do four Goodyear tires and Sunoco fuel and air pressure adjustments. Martin Truex Jr. comes in as the leader, said the car was just a little bit too free, so he wants an air pressure adjustment to try and tighten him up. Just in front of him, Joey Logano angled way out on his pit stall there. He said his car was too tight and he lost rear drive. Truex has to slow down getting around Logano because of that angle. Logano has to go around the 20 car as well. That'll cost him some spots here on pit road, Rick. Yeah, you look at the race off pit road. Kyle Larson able to grab a spot right, as is there, the hood. Brad Kozlowski. Let me know if it's a radiator or a roll car. And a problem for the 20 of Kenza. Oh, they're going behind the wall. You heard on the radiator, is it the, or on the radio, is it the radiator or the oil cooler? So there must be a leak of some sort. You see the nose crushed in right here. I think it had to come in a pit road, didn't it, Jeff? The mechanical port over here behind the wall. It almost had to. I, I saw everybody bottled up on pit road. You see the safety trucks on pit road. Yeah, the ambulance stops right at the commitment line. That is, that's just a miscommunication. I don't know if if NASCAR told them to roll or if, Na or if they rolled by themselves and pit road was open. Normally pit road would not be open with the rescue squad there, but you can All see right, right here, they have no idea he's supposed, he's supposed to be there, that he's gonna be there. He's not supposed to be there, he shouldn't be there. And Martin Truex Jr. was not happy about that, Jeff. He said, I don't know what they were doing there. I had no idea. I couldn't see what he was talking about. Now we see what he was talking about. Meanwhile, Matt Kenseth has pulled behind his pit stall into an opening here. He has damage, obviously, on the front. That's their main concern. He also has rear damage as well as they're going to try and get this fixed here for the 20 team. But damage on the front end of that 20 car coming to pit road, making contact with another vehicle. So multiple issues. A bad, bad break for the 20 of Matt Kenseth with this damage and I think the 14's coming back onto pit road he has damage as well the crazy thing is we also had cars that went over the commitment line or the commitment box because the ambulance was in the way but this isn't the first time here in the spring race the 78 of Martin Trax Jr. had the same issue so this is coming to pit road pit road is just open Rick and you see the safety truck some cars go above some cars go below now that safety truck is on the racetrack but still very close to the commitment box the 78 has to go around him he hits the orange box right here with the right side tires, it is a commitment line violation. Now that, I could argue the truck was up on the racetrack, the apron was open. This issue tonight, absolutely unacceptable to have that safety. As you said, it's a miscommunication. All the drivers did a great job of not making contact with the ambulance. I mean, that thing is sitting there. No one, none of these drivers, Jeff, are expecting to have a safety vehicle on the apron. Yeah, I don't know what NASCAR is going to do. I think it's unfair to penalize them for that for the cone violation with the rescue squad there i think that's completely different than where truex i agree know, i mean he was they were on pit road and there was no almost, way they could go around them. almost covering the entire commitment line so the cars couldn't get to the inside of that box right but so that's two separate issues though right because you have the guys that maybe ran over the box that can or cannot be penalized but you can't go back and give matt kenseth his position so this has been a major shift in events marty and you see the 14 damage, they came down pit road. They weren't really concerned about that left rear damage. They were concerned about the damage on the front of the car. You see that big piece of silver tape that they put on the front grill there. That is not where the radiator opening is. That is below that, so it'll be fine there. And they think they have that damage fixed. And boy, you're saying on the radio, hey, didn't they do that in the spring race too? We got to get that fixed. So obviously a lot of frustrated drivers out here right now. And we're going to talk about this a lot now because of the fact that the ambulance was parked right there. Either they shouldn't have opened pit road because the ambulance was there or the ambulance shouldn't have been there when they had pit road open. So that was a problem with the track and NASCAR communication with the cars. Anytime the cars see a green light on the entrance to pit road, they're going to dive on. Clearly a mistake. I mean, when pit roads open as a competitor, you have to come on pit road. You know, you don't have a choice. You can't go around and just say, I'm not going to pit because there's a you, you got to get on pit road. So just a miscommunication. And unfortunately, there's going to be some winners from it. and There's going to be some losers from it. Yeah, the ambulance didn't listen to the communications from the command center. And so that means there will be no commitment line violations through the Geico restart zone. Back to racing.
Brad Keselowski on the inside. Kyle Larson on the outside, fighting for the lead at Richmond. Here comes the 78, Martin Truex Jr. trying to look to the inside of that 41, but still door to door for the lead. Now it's Larson. Larson out front, Kozlowski running a little bit higher line. Find Kurt a little push. Oh, sorry, Rick, I was going to say, you mentioned that higher line. Well, Brad Kozlowski find a little traction in that higher line. So it worked pretty good for him. But now we have Kurt Busch underneath it for the second position. We haven't talked a lot about the 41 tonight. And really, Rick, to be honest, really all summer. He comes out, he wins the Daytona 500 to start the year. They've had a lot of ups and downs all summer long. Maybe this is a good sign for the 41. They've run a little bit better as of late. A good run at Richmond. Seems like all these playoff cars, Rick, they're getting into playoff mode as they're coming. Parker. Guys, what's been most impressive about that 41 is he tries to drive it really hard into turn one and clear the two Brad Keselowski is how much they've changed on that 41 car. Tony Gibson and him have done wedge adjustments, spring rubbers. They've changed everything on that 41 car in stops and gain positions on pit road as they've tried to make it into a top five car and we're seeing that right now. Well, top five, it could be a winning car tonight as strong as they're running. Yeah, I just got information from NASCAR. I just spoke to him. There were gonna, there are there will be no pit road penalties. Essentially, what happened was the rescue squad did not listen to the to the to the tower. The NASA, the, the tower, the rescue squad roll when they weren't supposed to roll. That was why the problem happened. So many moving parts, right? Yeah. They're going to open pit road, and they can see it much like we can from up here above the racetrack. But you got to move those chess pieces. But they all kind of have to move in you in unison. I I would have loved to have been a fly on the wall in the NASCAR command center, Rick, because I'm guessing there was a little bit of panic when that. <laughs> Ambulance was directly in the way. Marty. And Rick, the 20 has now been put on the clock, but they just put the window net down for Matt Kenseth. Their night is going to be done. They're not going to be able to get this damage fixed within this five minutes. We'll get a word with Matt Kenseth in a moment, but clearly some very frustrated guys down here for the 20 camp. And I don't blame them. Yeah. I'd be frustrated too. I'd, oh. I'd be livid. And, and, you know, this could have championship implications on it. So it's, it's you know, I don't, you know, I don't care how long you do this. You're never going to see everything. You think you've seen it all, and something like this happens. Right, to your point about being frustrated, Rick, if I was the crew chief of the 20, if I was Jason Ratcliffe, I know it doesn't matter, and I know the results can't be changed. But I would be in the trailer after the race to, to state my case, to state my frustration, not to change the results, but because I feel like I owe it to the fan base, owe it to the sponsors, owe it to the men and women at Joe Gibbs Racing that work on that 20 car. As the leader of that car, you have to go in there and voice your opinion. Now, that doesn't change anything, but it's at least maybe a little bit of the pressure valve can open. Now, what does Matt Kenseth do? He sits, waits, and watches. No new winner, he's still in the playoffs. New winner, Matt Kenseth is probably going to be the outside looking in. Well, Steve, this isn't the first time we've seen a strange set of incidents here in Richmond. Remember a couple years ago, Michael McDowell down the back straightaway, caution was out, actually swerved, didn't see it, actually hit the pace truck. So, you know, I say you, you've never seen it all, and I don't think you have. So right here, coming to pit road, just did not see the safety truck, actually made contact. So I, it's just, it never stops. I mean, yeah. it just... You never know what you're going to see when you come to one. We've seen things. tracks come up. We've seen concrete go through noses. We've seen safety trucks get involved. So anything can happen, Marty. Well, this is not where I thought we'd be talking to Matt Kenseth at the end of the evening. What's your interpretation of what happened there coming to pit road? Well, we're all just kind of coming to pit road, and then I saw an ambulance sitting there. And uh, so I looked left at the ambulance. Same time, uh, Leski yelled at uh, everybody to stop because the ambulance was sitting there. And it was, just, it was a accordion fact that I just couldn't get stopped. So. Not really sure why Pit Road was open with an ambulance park there, but everybody stopped and um, I didn't see it in time and ran in the car in front of me. Think of a more frustrating race for way for your race to end, Matt? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, we're not out there done the race, so that was frustrating. Um, you know, we were pretty decent early on and uh, kind of lost the handle again, kind of like the last race once we got back in traffic. And uh, I should have been back there to start with and uh, maybe I would have gotten wrecked. All right, Matt Kinza there with, uh, you know, some. Kind words there, not too upset about it, but the team, though, quite upset about what happened. Well, an incredibly class act there for Matt Kenseth. Obviously, something that would not have ever entered his imagination happens, and he is now out of the car. 
You're watching the Federated Auto Parts 400, a crazy entrance to Pitt Road. Bottles up the crowd coming in, and now the 20 out of this one. Only 118 laps remaining in this Monster Energy Cup Series racing from Richmond. Telecast presented by Smithfield Foods. Want to see who's topping tonight's Mountain Dew speed charts. Of course it's the guy who's out front. His fastest lap came on lap 112. 22.247 seconds around this three quarter mile track. Want to go through the field brought to you by Hardy's. Let's start with Dave. And credit goes to the pit crew for getting Kyle Larson out first that time. But in my conversation with crew chief Chad Johnston today, one of the last things he told me was cool temperatures will help us. It's jacket weather and Larson's out front, Marty. I can vouch for the jacket weather thing, Dave. Martin Truex Jr. Here's a surprise catching the leader at the end of the stage. He's running very well here on long runs. They've been strong all evening long. And just how good is his 78 team this year? Truex told me at the beginning of the weekend, Richmond is one of our worst race tracks so far tonight. He's led the most laps, won a stage. Typical stuff for Martin Truex Jr., Kelly. Well, Brad Keselowski's best finish in the last four races, 15th. There's no better place for them to turn things around before they get into the playoffs. In fact, Paul Wolf told me that it's been a tough summer. They've had a variety of mishaps. For, and uh, now we have a race for the lead, Rick. And Martin Trucks Jr. looking at the inside of Kyle Larson. Martin Trucks Jr. Wanting more playoff points. He's already won stage two. Now he's out in front of Richmond again. He said this to Darlington. A lot of people think they have the 78 car has some kind of major plan. Plan they got just fast racing. Yeah. I mean, they just, it's amazing the number of laps that they've led, how well they qualify, every kind of racetrack. It just doesn't seem to matter. 
It is very impressive what the 78 team and Martin Trucks Jr. has continued to do. Let's pick up through the field. We go back to Parker. Guys, it's been an up and down night for the 41 car of Kurt Busch, and it's been an up and down season for that 41 car, winning the Daytona 500 and then having a bit of a lull through the summer. So I asked his crew chief, Tony Gibson, what do you think your chances are for the playoffs? He said, we're getting better, but to beat those Toyotas, we have to be absolutely perfect. Behind him is the 77 of Eric Jones. What an impressive night. In a must-win position, this rookie has found himself running the top five through most of the night, but right now just struggling, continuing with overall grip. He recently came on the radio and said, I did a four-wheel slide into turn one. Not sure how to fix it, Marty. Parker, we've talked all night long about how Joey Logano's car is very good on the long run. Todd Gordon's been working on it, trying to get it better in the short run. They made some small gains on that. Logano saying his car lost rear drive during that last run. And I love what he told me earlier in the weekend. Second place this weekend and tonight is a failure when you look at our goals for the weekend, Parker. And look who's right in his rear bumper there, Marty. The 88 of Dale Earnhardt Jr. This team told me they were going to be good on the long run. And that has been proof here tonight. They have been great on the long run. He's made little adjustments in there. Right now, recently came on the radio and said he's got the track bar at zero. Just struggling a little bit of drive off, but moving forward, Dave. Struggle is the key word for Kyle Busch right now. He can't stand his race car. Cannot touch the gas at all. Feels like the back end of the car is uh, the back end of the car is out of the racetrack. As for the five of Casey Kane, former winner at this track, Keith Rodden, the crew chief, told me earlier today they expect to run well here. They had a good practice. They can get the five cars in track position. But you might have a little something at the end, Kelly. Well, it's been several races since Jimmy Johnson has had a top 10 finish. He runs 10th now. When he was asked about his summer slump, he said, I wish I knew why summers are so hard on us. Every year, we sit down in the winter and look at that summer stretch and think, how can we turn it around? How can we avoid that slump? And every year it shows up. It's just so frustrating. And I can tell you, I've heard a lot of frustration from the 48 uh, here tonight. But it looks like they're at least moving forward now late in this race. Behind him? His teammate, Chase Elliott, he's not in a must-win situation, but still, Alan Gustafson said this is definitely a pressure situation. He said, you get to this point in the season, it all comes down to one race, and I kind of like it. There is no go get him next week. you got to get him today, and he said it's good for Chase to be in this position. He needs to get used to these situations, these environments, and learn how to rise to the occasion. Behind him, you'll see that four of Kevin Harvick. This is Kevin Harvick's 600th career start in the Cup Series. When I talked to him about it pre-race, he said, you know, he's got a new perspective about his career as the stars have ticked by. He definitely appreciates the memories more and more. Remember, they've had a little attrition. They had to fix some damage on pit road, but it seems like they've got the handling better on this car since they've been ever able to patch up that hole, Marty. Ryan, it wasn't long ago that we, uh, Kelly, it wasn't long ago we were bragging on Ryan Newman for staying out on those old tires, only falling back to 10th. Well, then he put on new tires and went backwards for some reason, but they finally got in the handle back going the direction they wanted to go. And again, a long run car for Ryan Newman tonight, now working his way back up through the field. But those new tires, for some reason, just didn't work, Rick. And sometimes that happens. The tires just don't make the car better. And that was the situation now for Newman as that hasn't been the issue for Martin Trucks Jr. He's got a second and a half lead over Kyle Larson running in the second spot. Kurt Busch running in the third position and Brad Keselowski is fourth. If Matt Kenseth was going to cheer for any of them he'd cheer for all of them because that way he would stay in the playoffs.
NASCAR on NBCSN is brought to you by Monster Energy. Unleash the beast. Toyota. Let's go places. Credit One Bank, the official credit card of NASCAR. And by Subway Restaurants. A near full moon above Richmond, and maybe that's the explanation for an ambulance stopping right at the entrance to Pitt Road. That will be one of the topics that we will talk about this week on Sirius XM NASCAR Radio. And this week's guest will be Jeff Burton, who will join the crew there on Sirius XM NASCAR Radio, 9 a.m. on Wednesday, Channel 90. Rick, you don't think that Monday morning on the morning drive that Pete and Mike will have any fans calling in and having a discussion about that ambulance, <laughs> do you? I'm, I'm sure that will definitely be a topic of conversation. Something tells me we'll still be talking yes, about on it Wednesday. on Wednesday. Absolutely. But what we don't know is what else we're going to be talking about. There's still 95 laps to go in this race, and you just never know. We, with ambulance on pit road, late race race, so you just have no idea what's going to happen. Run. Guys, Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s got some big supporters in the pit box tonight. His friend Jeff Gordon is here along with William Byron. What I can tell you from watching these two on the pit box together, they seem to be texting each other. Uh, then I think they might have plans later, hoping the junior makes it. But these guys showing a lot of support tonight for Dale Earnhardt Jr. He's having a great run so far. Well, and that was announced. You talk about William Byron being on the pit box next to Jeff Gordon. Well, with the number shuffle, at Hendrick Motorsports and Chase Elliott moving over to the nine next year, driving the, the number that his father made famous. That's put William Byron into the 24. So you kind of have the guy who made the 24 famous with a guy that hopes to make the 24 even more famous for the years to come. He's got some pretty big shoes. Yeah, no pressure. <laughs> What's four championships, 90 something wins? Eh. Tell you what, though, that young man stepped up to the, he stepped up every yes, he time he needed to. Just as Chase Elliott has, Chase still searching for that first. Monster Energy Cup Series win though and right now Chase Elliott running just outside the top 10 in 11. Well so we just heard about the 88 Dale Earnhardt Jr. The people that are on top of this pit box watching well he's up to the sixth position. Well remember that great battle coming to the end of stage two with Kyle Larson and Dale Earnhardt Jr. This is for sixth and or seventh position so he was right there with the 42. They came on the pit road together pretty calmly nobody hits anybody the 88 doesn't lose a spot but the 42 gains two spots so a small gain but then what happens what does two spots turn into Jeff a better spot on the restart he starts on the outside behind the leader first on the inside a couple rows back Martin Trex Jr. picks the outside that moves the outside lane forward and that gave Kyle Larson that track position why do we go back and look at this because the 88 has a very good car he's currently in six but Kyle Larson from that cycle moved him to second and he's remained there all night long. So with 89 laps to go, who is going to be able to leapfrog? Who's going to have a good pit stop that moves him up maybe one row? You always talk, Jeff, it's a game of one or two positions. Two positions for Kyle Larson was a huge shift on that restart. So with double file restarts, two spots is a row. And it makes a huge difference in, in where you end up. We've seen the outside lane be really, really good on these restarts. So are people going to start waiting at the end of pit road trying to get in the outside lane We'll see as this race moves on if they use that strategy on the end of pit road under caution. You guys mentioned restarts. Will we have another restart? Is it possible that we go cautionless for the remainder of this race? 88 laps to go. Kelly. Well, just when I thought Kevin Harvick had the handling better, he said he was plowing tight. Then he said, I just can't figure out why I'm so bad at spinning off the turn. So they're making an air pressure adjustment for Kevin for Goodyear tires and Sunoco fueling what could potentially be his last uh, stop on pit road. Rick, you asked me if this thing could go caution free. We had an ambulance on the apron during pit stop. <laughs> I'm not going to guess what could happen. But, you know, here's the problem with Richmond. If you, if you study it and you look at the statistics, a big percentage of the races go caution free. But what happens when you get one caution? You get four or five cautions. So it's not normally a one caution thing. It's we to get a caution, we bunch the field up, and then chaos on all the restarts. Martin Trex Jr. came to pit road on lap 257. If I do the math, and I'm probably not doing it right, that's 143 laps until the end outside the, the fuel window. Absolutely, it's outside the fuel window. So if you assume it does go, caution free then you can be creative pit a little bit early break up this last run but here at a short track a three-quarter mile long short track a big gamble because you're going to lose probably two laps coming on pit road but those fresh tires are going to be 
very valuable to Kevin Harvick, who we just saw leave pit road. He'll be running much faster laps than even the leader of Martin Trex Jr. Yeah, Kevin Harvick right now, after that pit stop, he's one, he's one lap back. So you ask if you could stay out. Well, yeah, they can stay out. But the question is, on new tires, can Kevin Harvick go all the way around the racetrack essentially twice and get back to him to take the lead back over? Mark Trucks Jr. out front trying to win the last race of the regular season. As we go NASCAR nonstop. Back at Richmond Raceway, Joey Logano in a must-win situation coming down pit road. He was running in the eighth spot when he came down pit road. They've been struggling with the handling on this run more than they have all evening long. You're going to see him make a big left left side wedge adjustment and four fresh Goodyear tires, Kelly. His teammate Brad Keselowski also on pit road. You just saw them make a chassis adjustment. That was to take wedge out they had put in the last time. They're making an air pressure adjustment. He, too, is struggling a little bit with the handling on his car. He said he's just lost all drive the last couple of runs. Green flag pit stops are underway. 79 laps to go. Parker. It has not been the night that Daniel Suarez wanted coming in here to Richmond in a must win position if he wanted to make the playoffs. Just has not had the handle on that race car and also been struggling with the brakes in this last run. At one point coming across the radio and telling them his crew chief that it, they were absolutely terrible. They're going to do four Goodyear tires and air pressure adjustment and Sunoco fuel in the 19 car. Dave. Casey Kane now leaving pit road with four. Oh, now coming to pit road. It's that dodge out around the curve on pit road that threw me there into pit right lane. Now another wedge adjustment for him needing drive off on the five as well. So Rick your math wasn't wrong. Most of these leaders were on pit road at lap 257 is 143 to go. Well you mentioned outside the fuel window so you have an option run all the way to you need fuel assuming you might get a caution or basically you just split the run up somewhere in the middle that gives you the most time on the freshest tires that will have the least amount of lap time on the racetrack. You'll have the fastest race car as you see Joey Logano using those brand new race or tires just like Brad Kozlowski. That's the strategy these guys are playing. I think it's clear that 22 of Joe Logano, he's probably not as hand handling as well as he has been all night long. And this is probably why Airplane that ambulance Airplane situation Airplane again, Airplane. you got the left front nose hurt on the car. It's got a big gouge in the left front. You can see it right there clearly. That will not help the handling. Great big hole underneath the headlight. So again, quite a few cars were affected by that ambulance right at the entrance to pit road. Martin Trex Jr. He was able to clear it and be unscathed and right now has a three and a half second lead over Kyle Larson. Now the question is when will the race leader Martin Trex Jr. decide to duck onto pit road when he starts losing too much track time to the guys with the fresher tires. Well yeah now if you were going to pit you had to do it in my mind with the 22 and the two. Now these cars that have stayed on the racetrack they're pot committed to that strategy. Now they are hoping a yellow comes out at some point because they are continuing to lose time to the cars that pitted on, uh, on under green flag. But they're all a lot lap down at the moment. So a caution is what those leaders are looking for. We'll continue to watch this battle on NASCAR nonstop. Kurt Busch trying to take second away and does.
Well, coming up after the checkered flag on NBCSN, it will be continued post-race coverage live from here at Richmond, followed by NASCAR Victory Lap. We'll try to talk to all 16 drivers that will make it into the playoffs with the shot at the championship as we see the 48 make his way onto pit road. Kelly? Yeah, and Jimmy Johnson's car has made some swings tonight. At times he was just saying it was way too loose, and he was saying it was tight but seems to come to him as the pace slows down on track. You see four fresh Goodyear tires. Sunoco Fuel, Dave. Jamie McMurray on pit road right now for four Goodyear tires and Sunoco Fuel. On this run, loose in, tight in the middle, and he was working the inside track bar inside the cockpit there to try to fix that during the course of the run. Rick, we went through this strategy of breaking it up even. Well, this is dead even. This is 60, or excuse me, 70 laps on the old tires. They pitted with 68 laps to go. So they're basically breaking it up right in the middle. And I expect pit road to be busier. And here comes some more cars, Parker. 77, Eric Jones pits out of the top five, having a great night running inside the top five and maybe even getting close to challenging for the lead, but struggling right now. Said he was absolutely terrible as they came into pit here. And they're having an issue on the right rear. They're a little slow. They've had a couple issues all night. They're going to do four Goodyear tires to Sunoco Fuel, but not a great stop on the 77, Eric Jones. And with... The pit cycling continuing. The 78 now entering his stall. Marty. Yeah, these furniture road teams splitting this run in half. As Steve mentioned, Cole Pern calling Martin Truex Jr. to pit road, trying to close out the regular season with his first Richmond win, and more importantly, his fifth win of the season. How appropriate that might be. Only thing they did on that stop, add some tape on the grill, because the water temperature was pretty cool. Truex very happy with the handling of the 78. So now, if you're a Dale Earnhardt Jr. fan, you are hoping for a caution. Because right now, Dale Earnhardt Jr. is out in front and playing that strategy of hoping for a caution himself. And that's what he has to do. He's lost so much time, as you see Martin Truex Jr. easily unlapping himself. But that's fine. He still has a lap lead on the 78, as we see the 11 on pit road as well. Steve, it's been a rough night for the 11 team. They've been struggling with the handling of this race car. In fact, Denny Hamlin said at one point, whatever changes we made overnight made this car way worse. They have been struggling with an extremely tight race car for Denny Hamlin in his hometown race. Hope for better this evening. And we mentioned that Martin Truex Jr. just unlapped himself. There are only 10 cars on the lead lap. That includes... Martin Trex Jr. and Casey Kane, but Dale Earnhardt Jr. staying out on the track. He was on pit road on lap 257, so fuel will become an issue for that team if they do stay out. Yeah, but not an issue very quickly. I mean, he, he can run 35 or 40 more laps on the racetrack. So while this strategy will remove the chance of the 88 to win if it does run green, it completely gives them a major advantage if the yellow comes out. So we talk about doing something, doing something outside the box. The 88 was a good car, but Jeff, it wasn't a winning car. It was a fifth place car. This perhaps could be the move for the 88 to win this race and turn the entire playoff picture upside down. Well, Steve, remember the final green stretch here is 36 laps or less in eight of the last nine races. So it's a good chance we'll get a late race caution. So look at the points. Look at what it does to the bubble. The 88 where the wind goes in. He's highlighted. He's the leader. But look at this. It gets even more complicated. Matt Kenseth behind pit wall next to last is a point above Jamie McMurray because Matt Kenseth earned 16 points in the first and second stage together. So even in a race that he's done, he's watching on television, he could still make the playoffs if McMurray can't run well enough. Hey, Steve, he's running 20th right now, and they told McMurray earlier, you're going to have to run 18th or better if there's a new winner because of all the bonus points that the 20 is stacked up. Remember, the 88 doesn't have Greg Ives here. Interim crew chief is Travis Mack. Now, the guy, I I'm going to say Travis Mack, when it comes to pressure, He's got to be as cool as a cucumber when it comes to pressure because he delivered his own second child at home. His wife went into labor. They knew that they didn't have enough time to get to the hospital, delivered his own second child, and then the ambulance came. He was able to cut the umbilical cord, and everyone was fine. But Travis Mack, very cool under pressure. That makes calling a race look pretty simple, Rick. <laughs> yes, it does. Marty. 
That makes all this race strategy look easy, doesn't it? Clint Boyer right now in second. Brad Kozlowski rapidly catching him. But as Mike Bogaravich said, he said, listen, this is our only shot to get back in the game. you got to leave your driver out there on an old tire sometimes, don't you, Steve, just to give yourself a shot for being back in the ball game and having a chance to win the race. Yeah, Marty, I mean, it's, it's no different for the 14 than it was for the 88. You know, it's a must win. NASCAR has changed how the races are run because you heard Joey Logano say this. Second is no good. Well, second's no good for Clint Boyer. Second's no good for Dale Jr. Well, the two car pitted about 14 laps ahead of Martin Truex Jr. Remember, Martin Truex Jr. was leading the race. Well, this is the difference. By pitting 14 laps earlier, this is the lead that he has gained. Now, Martin Truex has fresher tires, and he's faster now and running Keselowski down, but that is what pitting early gets you. It gets you track position, and in this case, Arnard Jr. is a leader, but Keselowski's in second. Well, it's just like what happened at Darlington because while he did gain that track position, you mentioned those lap times, it's not a little bit quicker. Martin Truex Jr. is running four or five tenths of a second quicker on those new tires. So what cost him a race a week ago at Darlington perhaps may win him a race tonight in Richmond if this does go green, Jeff. All right, guys, I want to take a look at tonight's Ram Guts and Glory. Well, we're going to talk about playoffs. It's all about playoffs, Rick. Well, it's real simple. Get better. It's a must win. What are these cars going to do? It's, can the 88 make improvements? Can the two strategy work? Will that get them into the win? And if we do have a yellow, Jeff, it comes down to restarts. you got to have the restart of your life. If you want to make the playoffs, you, can, you have an opportunity. If, if you get that late race restart, take advantage of it and go make something happen. And now just a second. Well, actually, 1.9 seconds in front of Keselowski. Earnhardt Jr.'s strategy is about to come to an end as far as working for him because he's got, about to get passed by a guy with fresher tires. So as soon as the two goes by, he's going to have to come to pit road. Well, it doesn't oh, come to an end because no. if the caution comes out, he's still, yeah, he's still all in great position. position. So yeah, no. he pits from second. That's right, if the caution comes out. So I think he should stick to it. I don't think he but should. But for how long? Because he's going to continue to all fall back. Way. Until All he runs out of gas or he needs, needs to have to come again. Okay. At this point, you are pot committed. Pitting at this point will be like jumping off the strategy too early. I think at this point, the only option is to ride. I mean, that's what I would do, Jeff. Do you oh, disagree? I, no, I agree 100%. I think that that's the only way you have a chance to make the playoffs. You haven't had the speed tonight to win the race. You haven't been far off. You're close enough if you can get the track position to try to make something happen on that late race restart. What you're doing now, if you're an 88 fan or if you're on that pit box or driving that car, is you're just hoping for a caution as soon as possible. And so Truex Jr. is going to go by and take the second spot away. So now it's Brad Keselowski and Martin Truex Jr. separated by 2.3 seconds. The only decision the 88 needs to make now is they have to understand when they do come to pit road, will they'll come back on the racetrack. But I think, you know, with 51 to go in your hopes to make the playoffs, you know, there's no reason to try to minimize your losses. It's all about the upside. I mean, if you're gambling in Vegas, you're all in. When he was gambling, he was running about fifth and sixth. So when he gets to that point, is it falling too far back? Well, the bigger concern is this. This is something that the 88 tried in spring as well. He was out here on old tires running around the top of the racetrack. And the 48 with fresher tires gets in the gas. I think he thinks he's going to clear the 88 no problem. And basically runs the 88 over. Has no idea he's out there and ruins both of their day. That's the bigger concern for the 88 right now is he is so far off the pace on these old tires. He has to be very ginger around these new tires because you know, these cars are not perhaps expecting the closing rate in which they're going to see, Jeff. And let's listen into the radio for the 88. We're just going to run along here. We're going to put everybody pit down here. That's our plan. Hey, here you go. Run. We're going to run along here. We're going to stay out for a long time, try to keep everybody pit down here, get tires at the end. There you have it. That's a good call. It may work. It may not work. But it gives you an opportunity. And there's the battle for the lead. It is building. Martin Trex Jr. a lot fresher tires than the two of Brad Keselowski. Oh, what a week, mates. Last week at Darlington, the 78 was the prey being hunted by Denny Hamlin. A week later, Brad Keselowski is the prey being hunted by Martin Trex Jr. With 47 to go and fresher tires, I believe the 78 is going to make very short work of this two-car. That's interesting you say it that way because Martin Trex Jr., an avid hunter, and he found his prey and immediately works to the inside, trying to take that lead away. And Martin Trex Jr. out in front once again at Richmond. And now the risk for these two is gone. I mean, if it goes green, they're in position to win the race. But even if a yellow comes out, they keep their track position. But let's remember who else gambled and made this work. 
Joey Logano, early on pit road. He's now in fourth. He also is hoping for a caution. We go NASCAR nonstop. Earnhardt Jr. came to pit road 43 laps to go. And Harvick back on pit road as well. Kelly. And Rick to be honest I just made my way down here to the pit stall. I'm not sure what the call was to bring him back in. He was the first car to come down on the, as the uh, green flag pit stops began. But still this seems pretty soon to bring him back down. Had to be. Had to have been an issue with that four. Yeah, that, this is definitely, uh, you know, there's a lot of strategies, but pitting twice is definitely not a strategy that's going to work for the four of Kevin Harvick. It's going to be disappointing. While he's locked in the playoffs, it's just a momentum killer. You know, you want a good run in this last race in the cut race. You see right behind him there, the 80 of Dale Hart Jr. You saw it in nonstop. He made his pit stop. Now, Jeffy has the freshest tires than everybody in the field, so he'll go out and he'll try to gain some time back, but he's a long ways behind the leader. And actually not even on the lead lap. He's scored a lap down right now and not the first car scored a lap down. Martin Truex Jr. has a two and a half second lead now over Brad Kozlowski. Kyle Larson running in the third position. Kurt Busch and Joey Logano the top five. Again Logano in a must win situation but he just got passed by Kurt Busch. Logano having so many great seasons back to back to back fighting for championships and now fighting for a spot to even be considered in the championship hunt. Marty. And you got to give credit to Todd Gordon. Jeff Burton did it a moment ago trying to come down pit road early and trying to get those fresh tires taking a swing and anything they can take a swing at. They certainly brought more speed to Richmond but without a caution and some things getting mixed up here at the end of the race doesn't look like Joey Logano might be able to pull off that win tonight. Meanwhile, Clint Boyer, the lone wolf out on the racetrack, Rick, he's still sticking to the strategy. They're going to come down pit road here in two laps for Boyer. They waited as long as they could, hoping they could get that caution. Not going to work out for the 14 either. Everybody's just trying to make something happen. You know, ultimately, we talked about the 78 car. The reason they've been able to make stuff happen is they have fast enough race cars. If you don't have a fast enough race car, you've got to try other things. You've got to try other strategies. Clint Boyer on pit road right now. So Clint Boyer has made the decision that they can't go any farther on fuel or they don't want to gamble it. So they're coming to pit road for four fresh tires and Sunoco fuel. Marty. Yeah, Mike Bagaravic said on the radio, we just can't go any longer, but they waited as long as they could. And a great point by Burton. Everyone doing what they can, taking swings at the fences as best they can. The final race of the regular season, Boyer waited as long as he could on the fuel. Didn't work out. Tires here and fuel, obviously, to make it to the end. But Boyer not going to be in victory lane this evening. It was a must-win situation coming in for Clint Boyer, as well as Joey Logano. Daniel Suarez running in the eighth position still with an outside shot. When you talk about must wins Eric Jones right there in fifth and nine seconds back. I'm not sure he's going to run them down with 34 laps to go. I'm confident he won't. But remember Joey Logano didn't look like he was going to win the race in the spring until a late caution changed the outcome of that entire race. So a long ways to go still with 34 to go. It's only going to take one yellow to mix everything up Parker. 
Steve, it's funny you say that. Chris Gale just came across radio and said, go up there and pass that 41, that two, because if we get a late race caution, we can win this. We can beat the 78 and the 42. So that is their plan, hopefully to get up to third and then get one of those late race cautions. One thing you can't do if you're trying to gamble and get a win is make a mistake on pit road. And that's what just happened with the 14. Clint Boyer's team had an uncontrolled tire, so they'll have to do a pass through penalty. Yeah, I promise the night just gone bad. A series of events that just hasn't stopped for Clint Boyer and his team. But listen, that comment Chris Gale made about the 77 and Eric Jones needing to get up there. You know, it's one spot, but it's a row. It's a difference between restarting in row three and row two. That's huge. I would, if you said to me, hey, you're going to drop the green flag with, I don't know, 20, 15 laps to go, and you can restart fourth or fifth, I'm taking fourth every single time. I want to be in that outside lane. I think that's going to give you your best shot. So this one position is a whole row can change the entire year if you get a late race restart. But you know what happens, though, if the caution comes out? Got to do a pit stop still. Rick is going to go down to those pit crews. 26 weeks in, still is going to come down to execution. And the 14 now making his way onto pit road as we go back to NASCAR nonstop. Mark Trex Jr. still out front. Tonight's aerial coverage has been provided by our partners at Smithfield Foods. Looking down on this beautiful short track in Richmond, Virginia. This fall, anywhere in the world, when Americans are at risk, one team brings them home. The Brave premieres Monday, September 25th on NBC. Kelly. Hey, Rick, I texted with the four team of Kevin Harvick about that last pit stop. And it sounds like they're just trying their hand at a little strategy. I guess running outside the top 10 wasn't really doing them any favors, so they brought him in to give him some fresh Goodyear tires and see what he can do with it. The only problem is, is right now, they're a lap down, and they wouldn't even get the free pass if the caution came out because Jamie McMurray is the first car scored a lap down in 14th. That's because the 78 of Martin Truex Jr. continues to lap cars, Rick. Martin Truex Jr. Setting a pretty good pace here as Kyle Larson running in second had closed the gap to about 1.4 seconds, but now Kyle Larson can't stay within two seconds of well, Martin Truex Jr. Rick, we've seen these two battle and battle for the playoff points just last week in Darlington coming to a stage, and we saw probably one of the best finishes for a stage that we have all year for just one point right here. I mean, I really think the 42 thinks he has the stage one. He goes down to three and four. Look at this move by the 78. He runs the bottom. This looks like it's for the race win. That's for a stage win for one playoff point. 
That is what the 78 is racing for tonight, is five playoff points for this race win. Kyle Larson knows that. We've, we've talked about how important these playoff points are. You keep saying it, Jeff. How do you do it? You have to prevent a guy from getting them. Kyle Larson, two seconds back, trying to run Martin Truex Jr. here down with 20 to go. I, I get the sense that the garage and the fans keep waiting for something to happen to 78. How can the 78 car beat Hendrick? How can the 78 car beat Gibbs? How can, how can they possibly beat Penske? Well, guess what? They beat them all year. Oh, yeah. So going into the playoffs, how is this car not the favorite? How do you look and say, Martin Truex Jr., the 78 car, how are they not the favorite? They have taken the fight to the competition all year long. Well, think about Cole Pern, the crew chief for the 78. They wanted a mile and a half earlier this year. And the first thing he said is, we can't go, we can't wait to go to New Hampshire and try to win at a short track. We want to prove to everybody that we can win everywhere. Well, here you go. This doesn't look like a mile and a half. It doesn't even race like a mile and a half. This is true short track racing, yet the 78 consistently goes out and stretches the lead. His closest competitor all year long has been Kyle Larson. Kyle Larson having a season year, a career season for the 42. Three wins already. But now continuing to fall back as there's just 18 laps to go in this race, the final race of the regular season. You see Kyle Larson, he's changed his line, moved up way up the racetrack, looking for something different, knowing if he doesn't change something, he's never going to run Martin Truex down. So nice job here just trying something different. But a little further back from these guys, Kyle Bush, Kurt Bush rather, they're starting to put something together. They're starting to run in the top five consistently. The last month, this team, they found something. They've started to find some speed. I wouldn't count them out. Two months ago, I wouldn't have given you a chance that they would have a chance to win a championship. But right now, this 41 team, Kurt Busch, they're starting to run. And Jeff, that's exactly what his crew chief, Tony Gibson, told me earlier today, is that they really have turned it on. And it goes back to the Chicagoland test the week of Bristol. They went there and they tried a couple different things in that 41 team and realized it worked. They said, that's what we've been missing. And they've just made steady gains on top of that and feel like right now they are bringing their best foot forward into the playoffs and feel like they can really be a contender. But to beat those Toyotas, he said, we've got to be perfect. And that's showing here tonight. They just need a little bit more to maybe go up and contend for that win. Well, momentum is so big in racing and if you end the regular season on a high note where you continue to put together top fives top tens knowing that you can race with the guys that you have to over the next 10 races and especially in the first round of the playoffs those first three races so you can advance into the next 12 that is what these teams are looking for is that momentum and right now the 41 has the momentum the 77 has the momentum the problem is is they're not going to be in the chase or excuse me the playoffs unless they get a win well and to get a win they need to get a yellow i think right here with 13 to go eric jones is 77 you have to just hope that a yellow falls your way sometimes you know that's that's it you know you would love to tell you that there's another great strategy but the simple fact is if you're Chris Gale you're maybe even getting down off the pit box pumping up your pit crew making sure they're ready Parker if the yellow comes out exactly Steve and unfortunately for Eric Jones in that 77 he was told a couple laps ago just go up there and pass that 41 get past that two in case that late race caution comes out but since he got up to that 41 he came across radio and said I've gotten arrow tight he's gotten a little frustrated in that race car and has not been able to get up there and pass that 41 and they're slowly slipping back right now and slipping out of possibly being in the playoffs when you talk about momentum there's nobody that has better momentum than Martin Truex Jr. Marty. And Rick, talking about that momentum for the 78 team, this race is a terrific example of how the 78 team has grown. Truex told me earlier this weekend, it's not one of our best racetracks. They have dominated this race, and they're looking at their fifth win of the season. And talking about all those stage points, Truex told me earlier this year, there's a secret plan. We didn't discover something that the other teams didn't know. Being good on long runs and making that a plan for the entire year has really helped us out with these stage and getting these stages, stage wins. They will go into the playoffs, Rick, if they can hold on for 10 more laps with 58 playoff points. And I tell you, Jeff, that's a, a big shot to the rest of the garage area, isn't it, that they're going to have that many points for the entire playoff run. It's going to be amazing what the 78 team has been able to do all year long. will help them maybe to the last race of the year in Miami. 
Well, and that was the whole intention of these points, Marty, is that you need to reward the teams for what they do in the regular season. What people didn't like about the old chase format was that when the second round of, of the chase started, yeah, everybody was back to zero. It didn't really matter. In this, your regular season matters. You have to race every race. Every race gives you an opportunity to win that championship. It's kind of a hybrid between the original points and the current points. I believe rewarding the best teams, that's the right way to do it. They've earned it. Well, that's it. I mean, I, I agree with you that performance should be rewarded and year-long performance should be rewarded. And that's what we're seeing with the 78. You said earlier in the show, everybody wants to know what's the strategy they have to gain all these points. The strategy is they are faster than most other cars. They qualify up front, they run up front, they lead laps. That equates to a lot of accumulated playoff points. So we talked about that that battle for the fourth position, which could be the second row. Well, right here, Eric Jones underneath Keselowski. If he could pull this pass off. There you go, he's got it. So if he were to get a caution, now he's in that fourth position. What a season it has been already for Martin Truex Jr. as he comes up on five laps of racing to go. Five more laps for Truex Jr. And with five to go, Jeff, I'm sure he's hearing every noise, the brake pedal on every corner entry, starting to feel those tires. You start asking yourself, just please no yellow, right? The 78 has accumulated a 3.8 second lead. So at this point, he just hopes this thing run green, runs green to the finish. Well, he was leading with coming to get the white flag last week and blew a right front tire. So, you know, none of these things are ever a given. Talk about incredible seasons. Well, he is definitely the regular season champion. If he wins here, it's another five playoff points. Look at when the playoff points get reset. Martin Trex Jr. will have a huge lead as a caution comes out with under four to go. Now you can't count on that possibility of a sure win for Martin Trex Jr. There will be a restart. Yeah, Rick, I looked up. The 15 was very, very slow. Derek Cope off turn four, running high down the front stretch. It was hard to see if he had a tire down or if he just had an issue. He was definitely off their pace there down the front stretch. Something wrong with the 15 of Derek Cope. Brings the caution out. And it will be overtime. You got to come to pit road? Oh, absolutely. You, you must come to pit road. But how many stay out? Right now, there were 12 on the lead lap. Does... Logano or Chase Elliott try to stay out for two laps. No, I think you have to come to pit road. Here's the cause of the caution. You see the 15 gets all the way up. Well, wow, that's decent contact with the wall. You see all the debris flying. So I'm sure the 78, we just mentioned the 78 didn't want a yellow. Well, there you have it. You never want to see this. But I think the decision for pit strategy is very easy. You have to come. You're talking 60 lap tires. You Can know. you do two tires versus four? No. Not have to and do keep four. up. You have to have, and here's why. I answer that question. Here's why. That left rear tire drives you off the corner here at this short track. If you leave an old left rear tire on it, those two new right side tires, in my opinion, aren't going to help. I think it's up to the pit crews. Four tires is the obvious call. But I tell you who may can. Somebody that has nothing to lose. Joey Logano. He's back here. You know, he's in 11th spot. Maybe he does something crazy. Maybe, you know, yeah, you're not going to win the race unless maybe you get a caution behind you or something, but you have nothing to lose. You're probably not going to drive up on four tires from 11th to get this win. So maybe somebody like that does something crazy. And the 78-42, they are on pit road. Dave. Eight laps ago, second place Larson came on the radio and said a caution would be cool. He got it. Four tires adjusting for just a little bit loose, Marty. Parker. 77 for Eric Jones watching the possible playoff berth. If he can go up there and get that win. This pit crew, though, has had eight mistakes throughout the night. Been a little bit slow, so they're hoping to put four Goodyear tires to Snoko Fuel and be perfect here, Marty. This teammate, Martin Truex Jr., hoping to hold serve and keep the lead here on pit road. Obviously, as good as that car has been all evening long, he's been very happy with it and does not want any changes. He went around that 22 car and is still in second. Actually fell back one spot into second, Rick. How about that? Yeah, the 41 was able to get off pit road third, but it was a 42 of Kyle Larson who wins the race off of pit road. That could be a possible winning moment for Kyle Larson. Is this restart coming up? Kyle Larson, take a look at the crew reacting. That's the way you do it. 
Remember that great restart Kyle Larson got at Michigan to win that race. He now is going to be able to set the pace on this restart. He'll control the pace, try to move into that restart zone, accelerate ahead of the 78 car. Well, and Kyle Larson has been very good on new tires. Remember earlier in the race, he drove right by the no 18. Which lane he choose here, we just got to judge it off of whatever he's doing. We can't let them lay back on us because that's they let the two do it and they let whoever did it uh, the restart before that. This will be the most important restart for Kyle Larson. So one of Kyle Larson's things he didn't do very well early in his career, he wasn't great at restarts, gave up some wins, but here in Michigan on this day in August, did everything right, laid back a little bit, got into the back of the 78, got his rear tires off the ground, got his forward momentum stopped, turned left, made a big aggressive move in front of Matt Kenseth, cleared the 78 before he got to the middle of the corner in turn one, went on the winner race. What line does he start here? <laughs> That's a great question. You know, I'm going to have to take the top. I just, you know, 20 years ago, I'd have said the bottom, the bottom, the bottom. But in today's world with momentum and how they roll the center so quickly, I think you'd have to take the top. You can see right here, he took the bottom, Dave. Hey, Jeff, they allowed the driver to make the decision. Chad Johnson, his crew chief, said, I don't know if this factor is in your decision, but the 78 shows the top. Larson wants the bottom. And you know why that's a big decision? Not just for Kyle Larson. But the leader being on the bottom is a big help for the 77 of Eric Jones. Let's not forget about him still in that must win situation starting inside row three. But Jeff, having the leader in your row is a big advantage. Your row should accelerate first. That is a big advantage. I think maybe one of the decisions too for Kyle Larson is that how you launch is so important. Maybe he believes he, there's better grip on the bottom on the actual straightaway so he can launch better. Kyle Larson, the control car coming out of four. Green flag back in the air. We're over time. A great restart for Martin Trex Jr. A little tire smoke coming out of the 18 as he was hard into turns one and two. The 42 has cleared the 78. Going through three and four. One more time around when they get the white flag. Kyle Larson out in front of Richmond. And up into the wall goes the 78 hard. Caution will come out. Kyle Larson will be the winner. The 11, Denny Hamlin and Martin Truex made You're contact. Here, Kyle Larson wins at Richmond. I'm proud of you, buddy. You guys, hell of a job. Big crew won that race. Good job. Huge win. Think about this, pit crew pulling it off late in the race, getting ready to start the playoffs. That's a huge confidence builder. Martin Truex Jr. Great job, could, boys. had a great, good restart. Kyle Larson had a better one. And we're gonna have to take another look at what happened to that 78 of Martin Truex Jr. Shot up the racetrack. But the regular season champion Hard into the wall as we see the 42 about to start his celebration. This moment presented by Sunoco, fueling victories all season long. The fourth time, or excuse me, fifth career win for Kyle Larson. And while he continues to celebrate, let's take a look at what happened to the 78s. Denny Hamlin underneath Martin Truex Jr. 78 started coming down. I think he thought the 11 was going to start turning. I, just racing for position. I, as soon as they make contact, you can see the 11 start to brakes really hard. See how much brake he's got in the car. He was trying to avoid the incident. You know, I, I some wrecks. It's just racing for position. I don't know that somebody did anything really wrong or certainly not on purpose, but. Yeah, but it'll be an interesting conversation on Tuesday when those two are sitting in the Toyota debrief. Kyle Larson grabs the checkered flag. And what a way to end the regular season and get ready for the playoffs. Kyle Larson. An incredible pit stop. The team gets him out first. He takes advantage of a great restart. 
and now celebrating his fourth win of the 2017 season. And on this fan appreciation night in Richmond, Kyle Larson in overtime, giving them something to cheer about. That's right, Rick. Kyle Larson picks up another win and a huge, huge burnout. It was all about that last restart and that pit stop. Man, the team, they are so excited what they did for you that last stop, man. How did you guys do that? <laughs> God, I got the great team or the greatest team out here and uh, definitely the best pit crew in that show tonight. So I uh, can't thank them guys enough. They were they were money all night long. We gained spots. So uh, this win is a huge congrats to them. So uh, Target Chevy was pretty good all night. 78 was definitely the best, but I thought I was, was second best for most of the run. Would fall off late in the run, but uh, came down to the last restart there and got a good good start. Smelled my tires pretty bad and was a little nervous, but uh, we cleared them into one. and. Uh, could judge that I was pulling away and, and uh, I was pretty excited about that. So can't thank Target, Credit One Bank, uh, all of our partners enough, uh, Chad Johnson, the whole gang over there. Uh, I'm, I'm really pumped for the, for the playoffs. Uh, we've got a great shot at the uh, championship, I feel like, this year. So uh, looking forward to it. It's fan appreciation week in here, Richmond. We've got thousands of them up here on the fence for you. Loving that smoke show. What do you want to say to them tonight? I just want to thank all you fans for, for all your support, uh, for NASCAR, for myself, for all these other drivers and competitors. Uh, you're the best. Uh, you know, my cousins here, I got some family here. They're probably here screaming, hanging on the fence somewhere. So uh, I'm pretty excited, though. This is, this is awesome. Congratulations, buddy. We'll see you in victory lane. Thanks. And what does that mean? Well, that means when the playoffs start in Chicago, these are the drivers that are part of the round of 16 Matt Kenseth even though he had damage and doesn't end up finishing the race he will be a part of the playoff picture 16 drivers all with a chance three races four will be eliminated it will go down to the round of 12 three more races down to round of eight and then the final race at Homestead Homestead Miami championship four. Kyle Larson wins in the Monster Energy Cup Series for the fourth time this year. We're going to hear from a ton of drivers, so stay with us right here on NBCSN. Kyle Larson will be one in victory lane. We'll hear from next. And he's making his way to victory lane at Richmond, a racetrack that he hasn't had the opportunity to visit before. Victory lane at Richmond. This time, this season, it's at the end of the regular season. Next year, it'll be in the playoffs. And now, Kyle Larson with five more playoff points, putting him in a great position with the momentum to be advancing through the first round of 16, trying to make his way to the round of 12, and always with the ultimate goal to be in the championship four at season's end. Here are the points. When they reset, Martin Trex Jr. will have a 20-point lead over Kyle Larson. But you look at Kyle Larson, 33 playoff points. Rick, a lot's been made about that lead that Martin Truex Jr. has, and it is immense, but that is still no guarantee. 
I mean, remember, you still have to go run the races, right? That is a huge lead. But if you unload at Chicago and there's a mechanical issue on that 78, there's the lead that there's gone. And then there's still two more races to decide whether they'll make it out of the round one. So do they have an advantage? Yes. Did they earn the advantage? Yes. They deserve to celebrate it, but nowhere near a guarantee. They've got to do better than four drivers because four will be eliminated out of each round. Now, again, the playoff points continue to advance. Each round, those playoff points follow every driver, just like Kyle Larson was able to accumulate 33 playoff points because of an incredible season that he has put together and another win to end the regular season. Krista. Kyle Larson has just driven into victory lane, and I said it before he even got here. I said, I have a feeling this one is going to get really wet. It is going to be a celebration as Kyle Larson climbs out in victory lane for the fourth time in 2017. And oh, yeah, it's, got, it's a wet one. The crew is celebrating like crazy because this is the first time, Kyle, you have won as he hugs his crew chief, Chad Johnson. The first time in your career you have won on a track that is not a two-miler, a short track win. Your crew did their job. There's something about this celebration. I said before you guys came in, I just said uh, on TV, this one's going to get really wet. And um, yeah, it absolutely is. Go ahead. What do you think about this celebration? This is uh, this is amazing. My pit crew, my whole team, Thanks, Chip Ganassi. We'll see if he hits me in the head this time. He's going to do exactly what he did to Chad Johnson in Michigan. He's going to give you the old tongue. No, I didn't problem. clock him. I wasn't going to clock him. Don't worry. Uh, no, the, the, my, my whole team, especially my picker tonight, they were amazing. So I uh, can't thank them enough. Uh, I wish Caitlin and Owen were here uh, to, to celebrate with, but uh, we'll be home here in a few hours. Um, gosh, I can't believe it. Uh, that was such a long, long run there at the end. And I knew I needed a caution to have a shot, but I uh, just came up a little, or I was going to be a little short with a, of that long run, but we got the caution we needed. And what does this do for you guys heading into the playoffs with this kind of momentum and just with, with these guys behind you knowing they've got your back? Yeah, they definitely do. This is uh, incredible to have four wins uh, with still 10 races left in the season. So I'm um, just having a blast uh, racing for Chip Ganassi Racing and, and everybody at our, our race shop and race team, they, they work so hard and uh, this has been a dream season for me. And, we still got a long ways left to go, but I really feel like we have a shot at the championship. Um, I got to thank Chad and, and everybody also for, for making me look good on short tracks because uh, this, this style of track is, is my worst, and uh, for us to get a win is pretty spectacular. It certainly did not look like it tonight. Congratulations. Kyle Larson wins the regular season finale and goes into the playoffs with a huge bout of momentum. Absolutely, and one rookie who has continued to impress with his sixth straight top 10 finish is Eric Jones and Eric Jones is standing by with Kelly. Well it was a valiant effort for the rookie Eric Jones. Eric you ran up front all night. It just wasn't quite enough but what were you thinking that final restart you're lined up third on the inside line. Well I was hoping we could just try to make it three wide and make something happen. You know we we're just going to have to bully our way to the front and and um, unfortunately we just didn't get the chance. I just Missed third gear and, and messed up. I mean, that's, I don't know if I've ever missed a shift before. It's just really disappointing. Um, I really hate it for my guys. Um, just hate that we didn't at least get a shot at it. Would have loved to go after it, but um, the Sirius XM Camry was good all night. We were a top five car all night. We just couldn't quite find that last little bit of speed we needed, but um, had the restart we wanted, had the shot we wanted. Just, uh, just didn't work out. Obviously the disappointment, but you've been top five now kind of week in, week out. What's the determination of this team now, these last ten, to go out and get a win? Well, you know, it's high. I mean, there's a lot of good racetracks coming up for myself. Or uh, I have a lot of confidence that I've won some races at in Xfinity and trucks. So, you know, I hope we can go out and at least close out with a win. Obviously, that's our only goal now. So um, just disappointed that it didn't work out the way we wanted it to. But, you know, a good day nonetheless. And so while the 42 will continue to celebrate in victory lane, let's find out what happened between the 11 and the 78. Marty standing by with Denny Hamlin. Well, it was a rough night for Denny Hamlin and his race team, but somehow they were able to get up there, restart eighth, some chaos on that restart. But then going into one, got into Truex. What happened there, Denny? Uh, we both drove in really, really deep. Uh, and when I got on the brakes, the splitter slammed down on the ground, shot me up the track into him. So, uh, we, we weren't even, you know, I mean, we weren't racing for the win or anything, but um, 
Yeah, it's unfortunate. Uh, didn't want to get into, into him. He's a great teammate to, of ours. But yeah, tough, tough day for our FedEx team. We um, overnight we uh, we messed it up pretty good, and um, you know we struggled all day. Got a little bit better there at the end by just kind of going back to where we started the day. But uh, definitely not a car that could contend. All right. So you got back in the game by kind of going backwards and on adjustments, correct? Yeah, we were trying to make it better, but it was just whoa, getting worse and worse. And so um, it was a miserable day, actually. I, you know, they uh, they <laughs> they tell me uh, I'm a hero around here today. I was a clown. All right. Well, Denny not very happy with his day, and uh, obviously upset contact there with his teammate Martin Truex Jr. Coach was standing right there, but yeah, that they were both pushing a little too hard. Yeah, when you watch it, you know, you can see the 78 turn, you know, turn down the hill, and I couldn't tell if the 78 turned sooner than, the, than he needed to or the 11 turn late. I just couldn't tell what happened, but you heard Denny Hamlin right there say that you know, they were both in there deep, and he got on the splitter, and he needed to be turning, but he wasn't because it was on the splitter. But you know, when I watch the wrecks like that, I know he's not wrecking him on purpose. I know they get along well. I know they're racing for second. He's not racing him on, wrecking him on purpose, and sometimes it's hard to tell what went on, but well, Danny he made it clear. Denny clearly took responsibility for it. Now the question is, how does Martin Truex react? Remember, you know, the stakes go up. Next week, the playoffs start. These are two teams that have worked together for, for many months now, and, and that shows in their speed and their success. So Denny takes responsibility. Now we'll see what Martin Truex has to say when they sit down and talk about it. Such a bittersweet ending to the regular season, especially for one driver who actually won here earlier this year, but the race was encumbered, so Joey Logano doesn't advance into the playoffs after not getting the win here tonight. Let's hear from him. He's with Marty. Well, it wasn't the win Joey Logano had hoped for coming into the night, but uh, let's be honest, at times during the race, were you thinking we might be able to win this thing? Uh, there was times in the race that I thought if something happened to the 78, we might can win this thing. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I mean, all, all things that happened, actually, it did. Uh, we just weren't close enough to the lead to, to capitalize. So, um, you know, we... We knew that second wasn't going to be worth anything, and, uh, and then we finished second. So um, yeah, I'm proud of the effort we gave all weekend. This is, uh, like I said before the race, this Homestead maybe came a little early for us this year. That, that pressure that uh, you have for racing for a championship started uh, here at Richmond for us because our, our championship season was on the line, um, and we just came up one spot short, um, which stinks. Don't get me wrong. It, it hurts. It stings. But, uh, you know, maybe the end of our, our championship run, but it's not the end of our season. Um, and, and we'll get this uh, Shell Penzoil team and uh, you know, try to win 10 races. We, we saw all that damage on the left front. How much did that affect the car, Joey? Because it seemed after that happened, the car was a little bit different handling. I mean, it may have. Uh, it, it's hard to say. Um, it is a slower racetrack, but uh, you know, we still get behind each other and, and, and start fighting arrow quite a bit. So, um, yeah, I mean, I'm sure it didn't help it. <laughs> I know that. I, it's hard to say how much it hurt it. But, uh, yeah, just everyone stacked up on pit road uh, with the ambulance sitting on pit road i don't I, <laughs> I don't know how that happened but uh i'm not making excuses that um may, maybe if we could have hung in better on that long run we've been close enough to maybe capitalize on that last final restart and we did capitalize we went from you know 10th to second we just uh needed a little bit more but um i hope everyone in uh, in florida is doing okay i mean obviously i haven't seen anything since the race started so uh, thoughts and prayers to everyone and um thanks to shell again for uh putting American Red Cross on the car. That's a, a very special thing, and um, would have been cool to see that car in victory lane, but we came up one short. Who would have thought, beginning of the year, Joey Logano not going to be in the playoffs in 2017. Well, one thing I'll say about Joey Logano, he never hid from the pressure, never hid from the opportunity, but something from this race in the spring, that penalty shifted that 22. They just never were the same all summer long, and Jeff, the 22 missing the playoffs gives teeth to that penalty that happened to them back in the spring. It gets huge teeth, and Marty just said, who would have thought? Who would have thought coming into this year that that team, Joey Logano, 22 car, would not be in the playoffs? It's hard to imagine. Another driver who won't be running for a championship in his final season is Dale Earnhardt Jr. And Marty caught up with him. Well, it won't be a playoff run for Dale Earnhardt Jr. in his final season, but it looked like it might be for a while tonight. Were you praying for a caution pretty hard there when you were leading the race? Yeah, we needed one. That was the only way we were going to win the race. We weren't going to. We weren't going to pass the top three guys. I mean, we had speed. We could run up the fifth and sixth, but we weren't going to get around those five guys running in front of us. And uh, so we had to pull that strategy. And, and if the caution comes out while we're leading, 
uh, then we, we got that track position we need. And I, I, I ran around the 42 and a lot of the guys tonight, and I think that we had the speed in the car to, to keep that track position once we got it. So I think we could have, uh, if we could have got a restart on the front row late in the race, we'd have had a shot at it. But um, real proud of the guys. Greg did a good job preparing us going into this weekend. Uh, the guys stepped up. Every one of them more, were more vocal and worked really hard, and we had a great car. I thought our car was really good. That's the way we should have run all year. So apologize to our fans that we're even in this situation that we're in tonight because um, we believe in ourselves and, and we should have been, you know, we should have been locked in before we got here. But uh, wasn't uh, wasn't a great season performance-wise. But we got 10 to go. Uh, tonight showed us that we can certainly uh, run well if we work hard and. and and uh, so we'll see if we can uh, we can get a few more good runs. Maybe a win. You never know. <laughs> never know. You just got to keep going. Talladega is the racetrack that anybody can win at. But you know we'll keep plugging away and, and see if we can't have some fun for the end of the season. And um, it was a fun night though. It was yeah. great to run with the leaders. You know, run up yeah. front. We haven't done that in a long time. Well, it won't be the playoffs, Virginia, but as you can tell, very encouraged by what happened here at Richmond tonight. And ten more shots at a win left in the season. Well, Kevin Harvick's 600th career start may not be his most memorable. Kevin, you told me pre-race, you didn't really know what to expect from lap 30 to 90 on your tires. You guys tried your hand at some strategy. It just didn't work out. What were you guys lacking there to really make a run for it in this race? Yeah, we missed it bad tonight. Uh, just uh, couldn't get the car to turn in the center corner, would spin the tires on the exit and uh, fall off really bad. So those are that's a bad combination um, for our, our Jimmy John Ford. Uh, the best part of the night was I did really good on pit road, and, and uh, the rest of it didn't go well. The last couple of years, we're so used to you contending for wins week in, week out. Your crew chief, Rodney Childers, told me you guys might kind of go into these playoffs with a points strategy, some points racing in mind. Is that tough to wrap your mind around? Well, I mean, some years you have to do that, and, and I think in order to do that, you have to get the most out of your car still to uh, to to try to finish behind uh, the guys that are running really good. So uh, we haven't done that the last couple of weeks. And, and in order to, to get the most out of our car uh, every week, well, we have to perform at, perform at the best level that it can perform. So um, we got to get that straight and, and see uh, what happens when we get to Chicago. All right, this team's still sort of chipping away at it after the switch over to Ford, Parker. Right, and with another Ford driver, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. comes home 19th year. But you said you were working on some things for the playoffs. What was it that you were working on? Yeah, we were just working on some uh, packages that we wanted to look for uh, going to another semi-short track at Loudoun and uh, didn't work as well as we wanted tonight. We had a, a really good Friday practice and qualifying, but uh, similar to Kevin, we were struggling with a little bit of turn in the center and uh, spinning the tires up off. But uh, it's cool to be in our uh, first playoffs and uh, can't wait to uh, see if we can advance a, a few rounds and uh, put a good 10 race stretch together mentioned it's your first playoffs you're going to be a part of it's got to be exciting but also it's going to be tough there's a lot of pressure in the playoffs where do you feel like you guys need to improve if you're going to make a run for it uh taking away a, a few things from tonight and that was uh no mistakes uh we got to take that and, and make sure that we do that come chicago uh loud and in dover and then uh see if we can't uh, find a little bit more speed in our cars. We, uh, we've been searching for that all summer long, but uh, I do like the tracks coming up and, and we've had good success at them. So definitely uh, excited for our first uh, playoffs with Monster as the uh, title sponsor of our series. Uh, I think it's going to be a, a lot of fun. Ricky Sandhouse Jr. excited to get these playoffs going, Rick. Yeah, Parker, the one thing that Mark Trucks Jr. didn't want to see was a caution late in the race because he was well on his way to another win in 2017. But he did clinch the regular season championship. And so now let's go now to Marty Snyder. And there is some hardware that goes along with that regular season championship, the first ever official regular season championship for NASCAR. To do the honors is Brent Dewar, the president of NASCAR. Brent. Marty, uh, Martin, Cole, Barney, Joe, a credible season. You know, our fans asked us to uh, recognize performance throughout the season and throughout the race. You guys have done that. Most laps, laps led, most stage wins, most wins. Congratulations on behalf of uh, NASCAR for incredible season and 15 additional bonus points for the playoffs and to present our inaugural regular season championship trophy. Well deserved. Congrats in the playoffs. Thanks, sir. Thank you. And that's what you were after at the beginning of the season, wasn't it, Martin? Yeah, it's uh, definitely what we set out to get, and uh, you know we hope to get a few more wins along the way. And uh, yeah, tonight was a little tough, so it's a little hard to be too excited. But I'm um, just really proud of everybody on this team and uh, the position they put me in, uh, the race cars they put me in every week, and 
Barney for uh, for giving us all the tools we need and all our partners. Um, it's been a dream come true really this season and um, hopefully we can keep it going for 10 more. All right, we will talk to Martin more about the race in a little bit, but there you go, the championship trophy for winning the 2017 regular season championship here in the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series. Rick. And you see all of the different tracks around the edge of that trophy. What an incredible season Martin Trucks Jr. was able to put together as he is now the regular season champion and got 15 playoff points for doing that. Coming up next, it's post-race, followed by victory lap. And what an evening it's going to be. We're staying way past midnight. Here we're going to talk to a lot of different drivers. So let's go now to Krista, Kyle, and DJ. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our fans for your support, and we hope you enjoy today's broadcast.